What is going on everybody? My name is Radi and you're watching my channel Radi the Brand. Today we're going to develop this e-commerce website using WordPress and WooCommerce. We're actually going to take a slightly different approach this time and we'll be using a few tools that could potentially save us a lot of time and effort. So let me list a few of the things that we'll be exploring today, starting with creating a custom WordPress slash WooCommerce team using local, using underscores, using Bootstrap and actually extending Bootstrap. I'm going to show you how you can modify WooCommerce pages, how you can modify the WooCommerce style sheets. Last but not least, we're going to create a few custom widgets and actually there will be so much more. Before we begin, if you find this video useful, please consider subscribing, hit the bell notification button, smash the like. If you have any questions or suggestions, comment below. And now let's jump on the computer and get started. Welcome everybody and let's get started. As you can see in front of me, I have the Adobe XD file opened. And this is mainly so I can copy and paste some of the content and reference the design and colors. Saying this, I've already exported everything that I need, such as the logo, the slider image, some of the product images, and they're all nicely categorized in this folder. So I have some categories, I have some photos, I have some products, I have the slider photos, I have my logo, I have a screenshot for the team, and I have some payment methods. With that said, let's begin. And the first thing that we need to look at is our development environment. Today, we're going to do something slightly different. I'm going to be using local and if you go to localwp.com you can download this too for free this will basically allow us to set up our wordpress website locally and it's just a little bit easier to use than xamp so we might as well check it out and if you go to localwp.com and click on the download button you can choose your platform you can choose mac windows or linux and they have a few different distributions so download the one for your computer, install it, and once you're ready, come back, open local, and you should see a screen like this. Now, as you can see on the left side here, I have my local website, and today we're gonna start with a new one. So let's click this big plus button here on the left side and, and give it a name. Mine will be pausegang.shop, and then I'm gonna leave the advanced options as they are and click continue. For the environment, I'm going to choose the default one and I'm going to, then I'm going to click continue. Now for the WordPress setup, let's put the username as admin and the password as password. As we're developing locally, it doesn't really matter. And if we want to publish this website online, we can always change these things. And I could do a video on how to publish your website if you wish, and I'm going to leave the WordPress email as it is. So let's add this new website, and this should take a couple of seconds or minutes. Let's see. As you can see, finally, our website has been added. And what we can do from here is add SSL. So let's trust this. So our website is now trusted, which is pretty cool. Then our web server can be left as it is. PHP version, I'm thinking of just going for the latest and greatest and apply. The database is fine, One, that's fine. That's all looking good. Now, as you can see, automatically this started the website, but normally you can stop your website from here and start it if you wish. And now this is all looking good. Let's open our website and have a look at what we get. As you can see, just like any normal WordPress setup, this is the default WordPress theme. And, and as you can see, everything is working well. We're not getting the not, sec not secure here, but what we can do is HTTPS column slash slash and visit the website like this. And hopefully now you can see the padlock, which is great. The first thing that we might want to do is log in and have a look at the themes. So let's do WP admin. 
and it's running a little bit slow today but uh, for for the username I set mine as admin so let's do admin and then for the password I set mine as password so let's do that and log in all right now that we are logged in make sure that you have the latest WordPress version usually it will tell you and then if you go to appearance and themes we should be able to have a look at the themes that we have at the moment. I don't know why it's taking so long. Under themes, as you can see, we have the default themes, the 2021, 2019, 2020. And if you wish, we, you can remove them because we won't be using them. Now is probably a great time to start working on our custom theme. Today, we're going to be using a starter theme called underscores and it's very easy to get started with this theme is bare bones it's very minimal there is no pretty much no styles a little bit of javascript and yeah and a lot of functionality that usually you have to create manually and which i have done before if you wish to learn how to do all that i have created a video how to do a custom theme before which will be linked in the description below Saying this, let's continue and create our new theme. So go to underscores.me and inside here is where we need to add our name. So pause gang and click generate. This will take a second. And as you can see, this downloads a file, a zip file. And now I can actually copy this folder, close this. And if you go back to local, we want to find the WordPress instance. So inside here on this arrow, if you click, this will, this will actually open the project folder and under apps, public is where you will find your WordPress instance. And then under WP content and then themes is where you will find all of your themes. Now we're creating a new team. So we might as well paste the theme that we just download it from underscores and here it is if we go inside this theme you will see that we have pretty much all of the files required it's nicely structured uh, we we have the index header functions footer archives for a full page search sidebar single and yeah pretty much everything that we need the first thing that i'm going to do is replace the screenshot.png. I believe that this is 1200 by 900 in size. And I've already created one. So let me copy mine and paste it in here, replace. And now if you go back to a WordPress website in the browser and refresh under themes, you will see that we are getting our theme here and we have our custom thumbnail, which is pretty awesome. Let's activate this theme and see what we get. All right, now all theme is now activated. And if we click visit site, this should open the website for us. And as you can see, it's all working, but it's looking a little bit broken. And this is because there is no styles. It's very basic at the moment. So we're gonna have to set up everything one by one add some styles and today we'll be actually using bootstrap as you might have noticed in here so we're going to do that very shortly uh, but before we do this let's do some of the setup first of all before we start adding anything else i was thinking that we might as well add woocommerce just to get it out the way so let's click on the admin dashboard name here go to plugins and add new search for WooCommerce, press enter, and now let's install WooCommerce. Okay, as you can see now we have WooCommerce. Let's activate it and do the setup quickly, just so we don't have to do that later and we can just continue, just so we don't have to stop to do this later. All right, initially we need to do the setup usually, so let's do that super quickly. Then let's choose, I'm going to choose fashion apparel and accessories. And you could skip the installation process if you wish, because it actually adds a lot of the pages that we need anyway. So you don't have to create them manually. 
and we'll be doing physical products in this. So let's continue. How many products? I don't know. And I'm going to untick all of this for now as we want as we won't be focusing on this. Choose the team, continue with my active team, and I'm going to remove this. Okay, awesome. We have WooCommerce set up now. And of course, there is a lot more to set up, like adding products, setting payments, setting up tax, setting up shipping, personalize your store, and so on. But this is not going to be the focus. We're mainly developing the website, not configuring all these things. Saying this, let's add some products. So if you go to products, and this will ask you whether you want to create a new product or you want to import products. And I'm going to import some products and you can actually find some dummy data in the actual WooCommerce folder. So if you go back to the website and then let's go back to WP content, plugins, WooCommerce, and under WooCommerce here, we have sample data and then we have sample products and we have some sample tax rate. And I'm just going to copy the sample products and let's do the start import. Then I should be able to drag this into the browse button, hopefully. And yeah, that worked. So that should be all good. Continue to add all of those products just to save us a little bit of time. And I might replace some of the images just to make the store look a little bit more realistic later on. I'm going to leave everything here as it is. It's all set up nicely, so let's just run the importer. Awesome, we now have a few products in our store, which is pretty cool. And, and now that we got this out of the way, as you can see, the different categories, of course, they don't match our website, but maybe I can change them later, just so I don't waste time on stuff that you already know how to do. All right, okay, we can now start with the development. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this in another tab here. And I will have I will have the website in in here on the first tab. Then I'm gonna have the admin on the second tab, and then I'm gonna have Bootstrap just in case we need to reference something, and so on. Okay, now that we've created our team and we've done a few basic setups, let's start by adding Bootstrap to our project. If you go to getbootstrap.com. Today we have the current version today is 5.0.2 beta 2. And if you click on download, there are two ways of downloading it. Um, actually, actually, sorry, there are a few ways of using it. You can use it with a CDN. You can download the source files manually, or you can use NPM here or yarn if you wish. But to simplify the process, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to download the sources manually and add them like that to a project just so just in case somebody has a problem with npm or yarn this will hopefully eliminate any errors okay so let's download the sources download sources and this should begin the download for me here it is okay i have bootstrap in here so let me copy this folder close it and if you go back to our wordpress folder under the under wp content teams and then my, the team that we just created then then inside here we can create a new folder and what i would and what i'm thinking of doing is be to be a little bit more organized i'm just thinking of adding all of the css in this css folder so we're gonna have css and then we're going to have bootstrap As you can see, we have Bootstrap in here, and if we visit and if we click on the folder, you will see that we're getting quite a lot of files. But what's important today for us is mainly the SCSS. And technically speaking, we could remove absolutely everything and just have the SCSS, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. And I'm just going to include the CSS folder in our project in a second. Now that we have the, all of this here, we can go back to the theme and let's open this in our favorite code editor. I'm going to do left shift, right click and open PowerShell window here. And then I'm going to do code column and this will open Visual Studio Code for me. 
with my project on the left side. So we don't want the full WordPress instance, we just want the theme. And let me close some of the stuff that we don't need anymore. Let's start by opening the functions.php file. And the first thing I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit so you can see better. Let me close some of the things. The first thing that we need to do is create our style sheet. So if we go to the Explorer and under CSS, we need to create a new file. And I'm going to call my style sheet main.scss. We're going to be using SCSS for this project. Let me remove this, collapse the bootstrap folder. And as it and yeah, today, today we'll be using SCSS just because it makes things a lot easier and we can easily import bootstrap in here and start using it, which I will show you in a second. Now that we have our main style sheet in here, now that we have our main.scss file here, make sure that you have a SCSS compiler and in Visual Studio Code, you can get one from the extensions and I believe it's called, um, and it's called Live SAS Compiler. So make sure you get that. And once you get this, you should be able to go to your Explorer Let's close this and you should see this watch SCSS in here. So if I click on that, this will grab the main.scss and compile it. I think at the moment we don't have anything. So for example, let's do, let's do body. Oh, okay. Yeah, as you can see, this quickly compiled the SCSS into a main.css file, which we have to include now in our project. Let's collapse this. If we get errors, this usually pops up, which is good. And now let's have a look at how we can include this into WordPress. And let's open the functions.php file, first of all, and scroll down. As you can see, underscores have quite a lot of uh, functionality that they've added. So you don't have to worry about like such as the logo. But of course, you can change anything to suit your needs. And what I'm looking for now is this NQ scripts and styles function in here. And in here is basically, and as you might have guessed in here is where we'll be adding our CSS and JavaScript. So in order to add our custom CSS, I can actually copy this line here by doing Alt, Shift and down arrow. This copies the line. And what I'm going to do, okay, let's change this to Pause Gang dash maybe main. And then we're gonna have to change this a little bit actually. So we're gonna do get underscore template underscore directory and then underscore URI. And then basically this will URI and then two quotes to, and then two brackets dot and then inside here we can specify the folder where our style sheet is so that would be that would go to the template directory which is here and then we need to visit the css folder so slash css and then slash main dot c uh, CSS, which is our file here, or compiled file. So technically speaking, if you go back to main.scss and do something like body, and then inside the body, let's do background color of something like this color here. Let's save this, go back to the website. Refresh the website. And as you can see, the color changes, which means that our style sheet is now working and let's have a look at what we need to do next. Let's remove this, obviously we won't need it. This is just to test. We'll probably be adding more stuff like this as when we need them. But for now, all we need is Bootstrap to get started. And also we need to change the fonts. So both of the fonts that I have on the design come from Google. And let me show you how we can add them. Okay, before we do anything else, I noticed that my server was running super slow. And what I've done is I went back to local and I changed the PHP version back down to 7.3.5, which was the default one. And now the website is running super fast, not like before, which is something that I will make a note of. Let's go back to functions and let's start by adding our custom fonts. And first of all, let's copy some comments and we can add this anywhere in the functions.php file. So I'm gonna do custom fonts in here. 
and you can add custom fonts locally from Adobe fonts or Google fonts. Today I will be using Google font, so let's create a new function and we need to enqueue this font. So we, so what we can do is let's call our function something like enqueue underscore custom underscore font and inside the bracket, first of all, we can check if it's an admin. I actually saw this example either on Stack Overflow or the WordPress documentation. I'll try to link it up, but we can check if it's not admin, then we can then we can register the styles and enqueue them. So let's register our first one by doing WP underscore register underscore style. And then inside here, we need to pass the font name. So that would be source sans pro. Well, we need to give it a name. And then we can pass the URL in here. I've already went to Google Fonts and found the font that I need. First of all, for the body, I need the Source Sans Pro and I've included the 400 and 700 uh, weights. And now we need to close this and we need to enqueue it. So WP underscore enqueue underscore style. And then inside here, we pass the style name, which is Source Sans, source sans Pro and close this. Now that we have the function here, this is not going to do anything until we actually trigger it. And to do this, we can use the add action. And inside here, first action here is enqueuing the scripts. So in WordPress, we can do wp underscore enqueue underscore scripts. And then we can pass the name of the script that we want to run. So it's in Q custom fonts in here, copy and paste and close this. So this should be good for custom fonts. And also realize that I might need to add the Nonito font. So I might do that in a second. But if we go back to the website, refresh and do control new to inspect the code, you will see that we have our main style sheet in here. And we also have the Google font, which is coming up. And that's brilliant. Should we get, let's quickly get the Nonito as well, because I totally forgot to get that. So Google fonts and let's go and search for Nonito. This is the one that I want. And I'm not sure about the weights that I want, but I might just go with something like 400 and 700. So, so I can select this style. And let's go for 700 as well. And then the two ways, of course, you can import this to your style sheet if you wish, but I believe that the link is a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is copy this link, actually grab the link from here. And let's go back to functions.php. Let's copy this line here. So let's do another line. Let's change the URL and oops. Let's copy. Uh, sorry, we need to copy this URL here. And let's paste it in here and then and then let's go back and grab the name. I'm just going to set this as Nonito and I'm going to grab this as well. So let's put another comment in here. So that would be just, we also need to change the name of this to Nonito. And we need to change this line. Sorry, and we need to add another line. Now let's do one more and do Nonito. Uh, replace it here. So let's space them out like this and we should be good to go. So if I save this, go back to our page. Actually, this is the source of the page. And if we refresh, you will see that we're getting the Nonito font as well, and we should be good to go. Okay, let's close this. Let's go back to our page and let's have a look at how we can include Bootstrap and how we can start using it. Now, first of all, let's go back to Bootstrap and have a look at how we can use it. If we click on Get Started and if we go down to Customize and then SCSS, Inside here is where you can read about how you can get started with the SCSS of Bootstrap.
And as you can see, there are two options. The first option is to import absolutely everything from Bootstrap by doing, by doing this. And then the second option, let me zoom in, is by actually selecting what you want to import. But we still have to import these three things. These are required. So the required bits are functions, variable, variables, and mixings. These are nice to have, basically. These are optional. But if you're not using something like, I don't know, if you're not using something like the root or reboot, you can remove them. You don't have to include them and that will save you a few kilobytes. Today, I'm going to import everything. And the reason for this is mainly because when I upload this project, I want you to be able to download it and start using everything from Bootstrap instead of trying to come back, instead of trying to figure out what's missing. But obviously, as I said, if you want to save a few kilobytes, you can do this, which is pretty awesome. So first of all, let's grab this code, copy it, go back to our project. Let's open our main.scss file, which is under the folder of CSS and let's paste the code. So this is all good. We, we have now imported Bootstrap and if you save this, you will see that it's using a folder called node modules, Bootstrap, SCSS and Bootstrap. This is actually assuming that we installed it with um, NPM, but we actually downloaded it manually and we don't have this node modules folder. So what I'm gonna do is find what the Bootstrap name is and in the CSS, we can actually rename this as well if you wish. So let's rename this to Bootstrap, just like so, just to make it a little bit neater, I guess, easier. And and what we can do is remove one of the dots, remove another node modules, and then so we're going straight into Bootstrap, SCSS, and then Bootstrap. So let's save this, and hopefully we won't get any warnings now. It's watching and it's watching, it's generated the files and everything is looking good. So technically, if I go to main.css, you will see that everything has been generated from Bootstrap. Uh, yeah, and it's quite long, it's a, it's a big file. Let me have a quick look. If we right click and go to reveal in File Explorer, this is now 234 kilobytes. Uh, yeah, it's a fairly big file. And that's why you might want to consider doing the adoption. But technically speaking, this file hasn't been optimized. And in Visual Studio Code, if you're using the life size compiler, you can technically go to, let's go to the plugin and then extension settings. If we scroll down, life size compile if we scroll down you will see this uh, life size compile settings and if we click on those settings we can actually tell the life size compiler to compile this file as minified file so i've actually done this previously um so i could potentially uncomment this i wonder what i need i probably need comma and now this will actually save us .minify file and .css. But the reason that I don't have it on is because I feel like it's taking a few more seconds longer and I don't wanna like refresh the browser and like keep on waiting. So let me save this just to show you and let's go back to uh, the folder. So if we make a change, so I don't know, let's make a change. Technically speaking, this is gonna, take a second and as you can see we are actually having the main.minify file now which is should be all put together like this this is minified and also of course if you're going to use the minified you're going to have to go back to functions.php go up here and just change main to dot uh, to main what is it main.min.css and this is going to be using the minify file i'm going to leave it like this just because it's faster to develop um, and let's go back to settings and remove this and also i believe that there is another option to make it even more compressed but yeah let's remove this let's remove the comma as as we in here we might as well have a look at what the size difference is let's go to css and the minified one is only slightly smaller. So the minified one is 187. So the minified is ever so slightly smaller. Anyways, let's close this and continue. Let's remove this. Let me remove the minified, the minified map. All right. 
Okay, now that we have Bootstrap set up and or start working, technically speaking, if we go back to the website and refresh, we should see some changes. And as you can see, the font changed a little bit. And I think that's pretty much it. So we are getting the styles, they're working. The font's definitely changed. We can have a look at the next step. So if you go back to Bootstrap, if we scroll down slightly, you will notice that we have uh, a few more sections in here. And basically these sections show you how we can override some of the, um, some of the properties. For example, here you can override the body background by doing the dollar sign, which is a variable body dash background and setting this to uh, white. Uh, you can do the same to the body color. They have different map, which allows us to do a lot more stuff, such as changing the border radius and things, changing colors. Um, and we're definitely going to be doing quite a lot of this. And but before, but before we do that, I just want to mention that. So if you wanted to change something, you're going to have to, for example, copy this variable and you're going to have to paste the variables in here. So if you're modifying anything from Bootstrap, you're going to have to do it on top of this import and save. Now we're modifying the body background color. So if I save this and refresh the page, you will see that it took a second, but you will see that the background color changed, which means that everything is working as it should. So we, this is how we're going to be modifying Bootstrap basically. So let's remove this and continue. Let's go back and add, let's start working on the layout and slowly we'll be adding styles as we go along. So the first thing that I want to do is actually change our website to use this, to use a page instead of a blog post. And to do this, we can go to the dashboard and then settings general. And we, no, it wasn't general, it was reading. Yeah, in, in settings reading, you can put a static page and let's say our static page will be that sample page. Definitely, we definitely need to change the name. So let's save this. Let's go back to pages and let's click on edit sample page. And let's just change the name to home. And do I have to change the permalink? Nope. I think that should be all good. So let's update this. Uh, let's go back. And now, now that's called home, it's all good. We can go back to a website. As you can see, this is an actual page now. We're actually getting all of the menu items, which people cool, are heading. And this is all coming from Gutenberg and then the sidebar and a footer. All right, let's start by, let's start by editing this. Now this page is currently using the, where is it, where is it? The page.php. So if I've if I put something like one, two, three and, re and save this and refresh, you'll see that I'm getting one, two, three. So we definitely know that our home page is using the page.php. Now I could start this page to look exactly the same as this, but this would mean that every time we create a page, every single page will look like this. So I don't want that. I actually want a custom front page. And to do this, we're gonna have to add a little bit to this theme. So let me show you what I mean. So first of all, so to create a custom front page, we're going to have to create a new file. And actually, actually, now that we are already in this page, let's copy everything from page.php and let's create a new page. This one will be called front-page.php and let's paste everything from PHP from page.php into front-page.php and let's actually make sure that you remove the one, two, three. And let's do something like h1 home okay. or let's do front page. Save this, let's go back, refresh. And as you can see, we have front page. Now, the great thing about this is obviously that we can do whatever we like on the front page and then the rest of the pages, the normal pages, can just use Gutenberg or whatever. Okay, let's remove this and have a look at this file. As you can see at the top, we have our header. So if you want to, so if you don't want to include your header or if you want to do something custom, you can remove this and your header will disappear. And the same as the sidebar and the footer. Obviously on the front page in the design, we don't have a sidebar anywhere. So I'm going to remove this. Save 
and if you go back, refresh, you will see that the sidebar is now gone. We can start developing this page from top to bottom and that means that we can start with the header. So get header means that it's gonna go and grab the header file which is the, where is, where is it? header.php. So this is what this does. This basically gets this header.php file. So whatever I change in here will reflect on the home page as well. We're gonna have to change quite a lot in here, so we might as well get started. But the beautiful thing about this is that a lot of it is already set for us. So we have the languages, uh, we have the viewport setup, of course you can change it. Uh, we have the WP head, which adds, I think it adds all of the styles, JavaScript stuff, we have the body class and so many good things that we're going to be using. And also we have a menu that we don't have to think about. It's already added and we can just style. Okay, let's go to the design festival and have a look. As you can see at the top, we have this kind of like a announcement bar, which we have the phone number, the email, uh, free use shipping, 30 days money back guarantee and 24 customer service. So let's concentrate on this and then we can do the header later. And you need to go to header.php. I'm actually going to do this announcement bar just above the header tag inside here. Okay, let's start by writing the announcement bar. As I, I'm, I'm gonna try to use Bootstrap as much as I can, but sometimes I think in this section, I'm just gonna have to add a little bit of styles. And then for the rest, pretty much we should be able to use most of the Bootstrap CSS classes, and we can also modify them as we go along. So for the announcement bar, I'm gonna do dot announcement, dash bar, and press enter. This will create a div for me, and inside this div, I want to have two columns, one for the left side and one for the right side. As you can see, the right side is slightly bigger, so we can do that. Let's create a container. And the container will basically center line or page, just like the design. So we're gonna get all of the details here in the center, which we'll see in a second. And inside the container, we can create a row. And inside this row, we can create the two columns. The first column that I want to create will be co-medium-4. And the second column that I want to create will be dot co dash medium dash eight. And inside here is where we can start adding the information. So let's say co one, and let's say this is co two, just for the example. Let's save this, let's go back and refresh. And as you can see, we're getting code one and code two, and also the center aligned on the page. It's kind of hard to tell now, but if I was to inspect it, you will see that the wrapper, uh, where is the wrapper? The container, sorry, is center aligned, which is perfect, just like the design. Let's close this, and I'm going to put this on the top. Okay, now that we have this, let's concentrate on the first one. And for the first one, we could do this with inner columns, but I feel like the right way would be to use an unordered list. So let's do that. I mean, this me this would mean that we're gonna have to add a few styles, but it's not really a big deal. I don't think so. So let's do a URL. And inside this URL, we're gonna have a list. Inside this list, we're gonna have to grab an icon. We, we haven't actually imported the icons. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to go and do that. If you go back to Bootstrap and do, and search for icons. Let's go to this page. And then if you click learn more about Bootstrap icons, inside here is how you can install it with NPM or, or you can actually scroll to the bottom and inside here, there should be a CDN. So here we go. Uh, we can either import this into our style sheet or we can grab the CDN link. And I'm going to actually use the CDN link for now. So let's do that. Uh, let's go back, open or functions.php. Where is it? Here we go. And let's add the icon here under the main.css. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy this, Alt, Shift and down, and then let's paste this first of all. I need to grab the link, the CDN link, remove all this. I'm gonna paste, I can actually paste the link in here 
and let's remove all of this because we don't need it and we just need to change the name so this will be bootstrap icons bootstrap icons like so and i think that should be good enough so technically speaking we should be able to start using the icons if we go back to bootstrap and if we select any icon let's say this one for example and they give you an example so we can just copy this and try it out quickly so let's go we can close we can go to the header and just paste an icon in here save this go back to the page just to try it out and as you can see we're getting the icon let me zoom in a little bit and this is great so let's continue Okay, now that we have the alarm working, let's add the phone number quickly and inside here. So instead of bootstrap icons, bootstrap alarm, we're going to have telephone. Inside here to make the icon circular, I'm going to use the rounded circle bootstrap class name. So rounded circle and save. If we refresh the, we will see that we're getting the phone number. So let's quickly add the link. I'm going to do it underneath just because there is not enough space. So let's do a a href and inside here we're going to have tell and let's add a fake name telephone number. So plus four four five 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 two 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 one one. Close the link, copy the phone number, paste it inside the link like so and close the link. Let's copy this list and paste it one more time just because we're going to have two items here and three items in this one. So let's change this and the following ones. So let's change this one first. We're going to have an envelope here. So by envelope, this is again run the circles. All of them are going to have run the circles. All of them are going to be the same. But what I want to do is change this to email, of course. So mail to and then hello at pausegang.shop or whatever the URL name is. Copy this, paste it inside here and we're done. On this URL I want to add a custom class and that would basically allow us to style this easily. So the class that I want to add to this will be the same as the announcement bar. Copy this but we're going to do underscore underscore list. Save this. And now, technically speaking, we should be able to duplicate this. So actually let's indent a little bit just so we know. And that's looking good. And inside the other column, we're going to paste this three times. So one, oh, sorry, one time is the URL, but we need one more list. So one more list in here and we're good. So the first one will be the free shipping. So this will be buy and then truck. The second one will be bootstrap icon clock and then history. And then the other one will be person. Then let's change the details. This one will be, uh, we're not actually, yeah, we're not going to have link here. So we might as well remove all the links and just do it like this. Let's remove this one here as well. Didn't realize, could have copied the first one. Okay, and now this one is going to say free EU shipping or something like that. Free EU. The second one is going to say 30 days money, money back guarantee. And then the last one is going to say 24 slash 7 customer support. Save this. Let's go back to the page and refresh. As you can see, everything is here. We can now start styling it. But before we do that, let me show you how we can actually uh, change our links to use the color of our team. So if we go back to XD and click library, you don't have to, but here I have the colors that I will be using. So I'm going to grab this color here quickly. And let's close this and let's go back to main.scss and let's have a look at how we can expand Bootstrap. So for example, 
Normally, people would either import bootstrap from a CDN and they would use a lot of imp uh, important after every single style, which is quite a bad practice, especially like if you want to grow your project, it could end up uh, quite, for a quick project, it might be okay, but for a bigger project, you probably don't want to do that. You want to extend Bootstrap and use, you want to be able to customize Bootstrap as much as you can. And in here, they have quite a few examples of how you can modify stuff. But today we're going to be using this quite a lot. So you're going to learn some bootstrap as well saying this let's go and first of all let's change all primary color now the bootstrap primary color as you can see is blue and i want to change that to the one from my design let's remove all this and let's actually put a comment here saying include custom variables and then the foods override here okay the first one that i want to override is the primary color so to do this i can do dollar sign which stands for a variable in scss and we can do primary and then we can paste the color that we want and of course this is a hex so let's do a hash and then the color of course if we click on this we can also convert this i believe if we click on this here we can actually convert it to rgb as well and save now that we've done this that doesn't mean that we're done we actually need to use the bootstrap teams color map and to do this we can do dollar sign team dash colors and then inside here is where we're going to be adding our new colors so let's close this first of all. And the first color that we need to do is primary. We're going to be coming back here to add more as we go along. So first of all, let's add the primary color. And the primary color will be equals this variable here. So let's copy this and paste it like so. And we should be good to go. So if we save this and go back to our shop, refresh, you will see that all of the colors have now changed from the blue to this purpley color which means that everything we've done now is working well, but sometimes you might actually want to extend. Maybe I can do a full bootstrap uh, tutorial at some point as well, but also sometimes you might want to extend those colors. And to do this is slightly different. So to extend the map, we can do create your map, dollar sign custom colors, and let's inside here is where we can extend or colors like the primary secondary the default bootstrap ones which you can probably go to bootstrap and then uh, where is the scss and then variables i believe uh variables you can see uh where are they yeah you can see yeah they're here so primary secondary success you can change all of them um but but if you wanted to add a custom one, this is where you'll do it. So let's add a custom one for our icons. Basically for icons, we are using this purple color with the 20% of opacity. So let me show you how we might want to do that. For example, we can add a custom icon, a custom one here, and we can call it icon background. Let's do that. Then we can do columns and then we can paste the color in here. So let's copy the same color, but we can add A to the RGBA and this is going to add alpha, which means we can make this color transparent. So 0 0.2 is going to make it um, quite transparent, just like on the design and I just saved. And I believe that this broke and because, and uh, this broke because we haven't closed it yet. I believe and also yeah that's working now and also so every time you do a mistake scss will tell you which is a good thing and you have to close it and also we need to merge this map we can do dollar sign theme dash colors and then we can do map dash match and then we need to pass theme colors and we need to add this here. So we are basically merging the theme colors and the custom colors together. Let's do that. Save this and close. 
hopefully uh, if we save this and uh, refresh everything should be good but of course we uh, this icon is missing I'll fix it in a second but of course we need to style this a little bit more uh, let's go back and fix the icon first of all um, okay and I just noticed that the envelope icon is missing I believe that I misspelled this so let me change it quickly is envelope save this the icon will appear as you can see this is pretty cool let me close this uh, to start at the top we can use this announcement bar and then we can use the list as well so what I'm going to do is in main.scss um, right here I'm going to do the announcement bar so maybe okay inside here let's add a comment and I think I saved this and that's why it broke because I haven't closed this so let me quickly close this and let's add a comment here so something like slash uh, star star and then header so we're going to do the header styles inside here like like so so it's a little bit more visible and let's start with the announcement bar for the announcement bar first of all i want to change the font to be slightly smaller uh the the original font is the base font which is one rem which is 16 pixels so what i want to do is change this to font size 0 0.0 0 0.8 8 rem which will make it i believe which will make it around 14 pixels uh, exactly the same as the design and i want to add a border at the bottom so what i'm going to do is border dash bottom and for the border i'm going to do one pixel solid and then i'm going to use the and then i actually want to add a variable here and the reason for this is because i'm going to be using this quite a lot so we might as well add one more so inside primary so sorry under primary here let's add another color and we can call this one gray or i don't know border color whatever you like this one will be hashtag e6 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 and this is this very gray color that i'm going to be using for the border of course we're going to have to add one more here so let's do gray and let's pass the variable from here so gray and save we don't need to do anything else we can now use this color and the way to use this color is by doing var and then and then we can do bootstrap and then we can do dash dash bootstrap dash gray and save hopefully if we save this and refresh you should be able to see the gray bar here let me zoom in you will see the gray bar here and and the font is much smaller now which is great now for the next part i'm quickly going to start the list a little bit if you remember we added this url and inside the url we have lists and the class names are exactly the same so we can start this super quickly what i can do is inside here i can do ampersand underscore underscore list and this would mean that announcement dash bar underscore underscore list which is this class name here is going to be applied so inside here i want to add a couple of things because this is a list i want to remove any padding and margin list let's remove the list out type to none we don't want the bullet points and let's display this as inline flex like so and also and we should be good to go here now let's go inside the list and let's remove and let's uh, and let's do a little bit of a margin to so let's do margin and bot, top and bottom will be zero and left and right will be 10 pixels but that means that our icon will be slightly to the right so what i could do a little bit of a cheat we can do margin and we can do zero minus 10 pixels to kind of like make the list go left so it's like perfectly aligned a little bit of a cheat in here and then we can display everything as flex which will basically allow us to align the items center so let's do align everything center and save for the icon if you want to select the icon as you can see it's using this b tag as bootstrap icon 
So what we can do is inside the list, we can go once more and do bi, and then inside here, first of all, we need to change the background color. And the background color will be the one that we added earlier, is this icon background that we extended. So let's copy this. So this will be a variable, and then this will be dash dash, bootstrap dash icon, and then background. Like so, and we're actually not done with this. We want to make sure that everything in this icon is center line. So I'm gonna quickly do an inline flex, so display, inline flex could have done similar with bootstrap i guess let's justify everything to the center align items center basically i'm centering everything let's give it a little bit of a width for every single icon so height 30 pixels and let's give every single icon margin right of something like six pixels let's save this and see what we get so we go back and refresh you will see that some of it is working, but some of it is not. Um, oh, okay. Some of it is working and some of it is not. And because this is a class name, so we need to add dot. Don't forget that. And refresh. Okay, refresh. Uh, sometimes the refresh takes a little while because obviously it has to uh, compile all the bootstrap stuff but as you can see we're getting the icons now they're looking pretty cool of course i've zoomed in so much so much that's why and and of course we need a little bit of um, space and what i can do for the space we can go back to the html maybe and control it with bootstrap so we want on the announcement bar we can add padding top p as padding and t as top and we can do padding top two, and then let's do P bottom two, padding bottom two, and save. And this should add a little bit of uh, space just to make it look a little bit better. Now, one thing that I'm not happy about is that at the moment, th these columns are actually left aligned. So we need to change this. I want to align this column to the right side. So to do this, we can actually go to the column, which is the MD8. And I'm gonna show you what this means as well in a second. Um, but what we can do is display this as flex with bootstrap, so D flex, and then justify content end. Save this, go back, refresh, and as you can see, this is now on the right side, which saves us a lot of time. The MD just means, and by the way, the co MD, that means just uh, kind of like a middle screen breakpoint will probably go in a little bit more detail later on but but yeah that's all looking good and one thing that i was thinking about is if we go to mobile at the moment this will break and because i haven't done the i haven't done the correct columns i can do one for extra small one for small and one for extra small and they can stack but for mobile i'm actually thinking of just hiding this bar so I'm gonna make this one work on like medium screens, maybe around here. And then I'm thinking of just removing it because on my wall, it's just gonna to take too much uh, space. But if you wanted to stack it, of course you can do co, small, and then 12. And then copy this, paste it in here, refresh. And if we go to small, you will see that they're stacking, but obviously we have two columns and maybe we can just center line them. This isn't too bad actually, but I don't like it. So I'm going to remove it. Okay. In order for us to be able to hide this from mobile, I'm going to be using the bootstrap media queries. So to do this, we can go back to main.scss and there are quite a lot of media queries that you can use. It's quite uh, helpful, but the one that I'm going to use is media breakpoint down. So let's include a bootstrap media breakpoint by doing add include. And then we can do media and then dash breakpoint and then down. And let's do large. Let me show you what this will do. So now inside here, we can just do display none. And what display none, save this. What will this do? Basically everything done from a large will be displayed none. So this announcement bar will disappear. If we save, go back, refresh, as you can see on desktop, we're absolutely fine. 
if we inspect and make the screen a little bit smaller, you will see that this bar is disappearing. And I think it's just disappearing on time. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not exactly perfect. Maybe, maybe the spacing between them can be shortened and so on. But these are things that uh, you can spend a little bit more time fixing. All right, now that we got this done, let's have a look at what we need to do next. All right, the next thing that we need to do is the header. So we need the logo, we need the search bar, and we need the items. Luckily for us, we already installed WooCommerce, so we should be able to do this super quickly. All right, and we can use Bootstrap for this as well, which means we're not gonna write so much CSS. So in the header, let's go down and in the actual HTML header here is where we'll be writing everything else. Now it's a little bit difficult to see with all of this and because I'm zoomed in so much, but what I'm gonna do is let's create a new div and slowly we can pull up some of the stuff. So this one is gonna be a div with a class name of container. So it's in the middle. And also let's put a little bit of padding, padding top to be two and padding bottom to be two as well. And inside this container, we're gonna have to create a row. So let's do row. And for the row, we're gonna have three columns. The first column will be for the logo. So let's do dot co. And we can even give this a, a class name just in case you want to style it. We can do site header. So I'm basically copying this site header class and then underscore, underscore, let's do logo. We might not end up using this, but it's nice to have. And then inside here, we need to add our logo. And to do this, we can grab it from here. So we can just do the logo. And of course this is PHP, so we're gonna have to open PHP in here and close PHP and add the custom logo and save. Now this is the first column. The second column will be our search. So let's do call and then this will be dash medium and dash five. And inside here, we're gonna have our search bar. We'll do this in a second. Let me first of all do the columns and then one more. We need one more for the basket. And for the basket, let's do call. Then we can just add a few classes in here. Maybe we can do cards card just to make it a little bit more specific and let's do cards. All right, save this and, and let's have a look. Let's refresh. And if you can see, it's a little bit hard to see obviously, but if you see, we have three columns here. Uh, this is the logo search and card. And also we have some details here that we could use or we could hide temporarily. So let me think about this. Some of these things can be quite useful actually, like the title and the description, but uh, to, and as you can see, you can just grab them from here, style them the way you want, but I'm not actually going to be using them. So for the site branding, I'm just going to remove pretty much everything here. I'm only going to leave the nav, which we'll focus on after this section. So let's save this, go back, refresh. Everything is looking good. And now we need to add the logo. Now the way the logo works is we usually have to go to customize and then we can add our logo from site identity and then select logo. Now the problem I'm going to have is that WordPress probably won't allow me to upload SVGs. A quick fix for this is if you go back to the dashboard and do plugins, then add a new plugin and allow SVG, SVG. There was a plugin that I used, um, can't remember. I'm not sure which one it was. I think it was, I think it was this one here. So let's do WP SVG images. And hopefully this will allow us to upload uh, SVG images. So let's go back to the website, then customize and then site identity. Let's select a logo. And hopefully if I go to my folder and drag my logo in here, yep, it allowed me to drag the logo. So of course, add, add your old text, add your titles, descriptions, and so on. It's all very useful and, and select. And now we can just quickly do this and skip cropping actually. 
And as you can see, we now have our logo here, which can be added from the customizer, which is pretty cool. And we can publish. Our logo is saved. We can remove this. And I wonder whether I need a little bit more padding in the top and bottom. Maybe let's finish the rest and we'll see. For the search, now we can either do this manually or I was thinking of actually using another search. So let's go back to plugins. I mean, the less plugins that you have, the better, but I wanted to show you this WooCommerce search plugin that is kind of, it looks quite nice. So advanced Woo search, let's install this. And it's very easy to add. That's why I wanted to do it. I think I showed you how to do the original one last time in the previous video but let's do this one now so active and if we go to the settings then you will see that you can either get the show code which is pretty good or you can add the php to your page so i'm gonna get the php copy and let's go to the header and inside here where search is i'm gonna paste the php code and save if we go back to the page let's open another tab Let's remove the icons. Um, please go to settings and click re-index table button. Okay, so it has to re-index the products in order to pop up to work. So this sh should be done now. Okay, so this is done now. Let's remove all of this and refresh. And as you can see, we're getting a very nice search bar. You can go back and you can actually customize this. I can't remember where it was, search form, and then you can have a button, you can have a loader and all sorts of stuff. Okay, here we go. We have a few styles, maybe you want this one. So select that and refresh. And that's looking pretty cool. I might actually use the simple one. So I'm gonna use this one here. I mean, technically speaking, yeah, I'm gonna use this one here, but of course use whichever that you want and save. So let me show you how this works. If I refresh and if I search for a product, so T-shirt, you will see that they're, they're dropping down nicely. And this is why I like this plugin. There might be some other ones as well, but yeah, that's why this, is, this one is quick and you can remove the searches and so on. All right, let's now focus on the cart. Now for the cart, I'm not gonna waste your time and I'm gonna show you a very easy way of doing that. So if you go to the WooCommerce docs and to search for show cart content slash total, you will get on this page and basically we can just use this for our cart. So let me show you how we can do that. So if I was to copy this here, we can actually go to the header and paste it inside here. Um, let me toggle the word wrap. If you want to copy this, you can pause the video and copy it. It's quite long. So I'm going to paste uh, the, so the link will be in the article as well or under the description. And then if we go back, we also need to copy this code into our functions.php. So let's grab this quickly, go to functions.php and save it somewhere, maybe like here at the bottom and show card contents, that's all good, and save. If we go back to the website and refresh, you'll see that we're getting zero items and zero, zero, zero. And this is because we haven't actually added anything to the card yet, but this is working from WooCommerce, which is pretty awesome. And now we can focus on styling this super quickly. Now let's have a look. If we go back to the header.php, let's move this, let's move this, let's move this. And let's remove this. For the container, we have padding top and padding bottom. For the row, I want to align all of the items kind of like centered. So what we can do is align dash items and then center. And this will kind of like, this will center everything as you can see. And then, then we have the header logo here, which is good. I think that we are good with the search. Maybe we can just modify it with CSS in a second. And then for the actual cart, we also have an icon in the design. So we might as well just add this. The icon, the icon will be I and then class of bootstrap icons and then bootstrap icons back dash and then actually the word dash and then padding. And then we can add a little bit of padding everywhere. So padding 
top, right, bottom and left of two and close this. We also need to close the eye like so and save. Let's have a look whether we get the icon and that's all looking good with a little bit of padding. But I wonder whether to link this as well. I don't know what you think. Maybe we can link this as well. And if you wanted to link the back, we can just use the link from here basically. So this one here will do. So we can do another link, a href. And inside here, we paste the PHP code and close. Okay. So the back is now linked as well. If we click on it, this will lead us to the card. Obviously this card is a little bit broken, but we'll fix it as we go along. And we can actually click on the logo as well, which will lead us to the homepage. Pretty awesome. Now let's make sure that this is aligned to the right. And let's make sure that this search bar has rounded corners. So on this column, which is the card, we can make this as display flex, display flex. And we need to justify, so justify content to the end. And then we can do align item center. So let's save and refresh. And as you can see, this is looking good. For the search bar, I'm wondering whether we can use the border. Uh, let me have a look. Actually, I won't be able to do anything with bootstrapping here. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use the class name from here, site header. So everything is going to be wrapped in this. So let's do site header underneath this header comment here. So site header, and I'm going to grab the class name, which is here. So if you inspect it, actually, I might be able to zoom in on this. Okay. Yeah, that's much better. So AWS search field is what I need. And this is a class name. And now what I want to do is set the font size to be slightly smaller. So font size 0 0.9 RAM, which is slightly smaller than 16 pixels. And then the border radius, I want to set to 20 pixels. And, and we might have to override this, unfortunately. Let's have a look. If we save this and refresh, the font changed the thing, but the border radius did not. So we might have to do important, which is OK, I guess, once in a while. OK, the important worked, but but now the text is far too close to the border. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of padding to the left. Hopefully that will be OK. So padding left and then I don't know, uh, 1.4 rem, something like this. It's taking a little bit of time. OK, this is much better. I prefer this. It's, it's quite minimalistic and it's looking good. And of course, I have the, uh, as you can see, we're going down. And this is all looking cool until it's not. So we're going to have to center this as well. On mobile, it's not looking so great. On desktop, it's quite nice, actually. So let's fix this. So for mobile, let's go back to the header. OK, so for the logo, because we are technically designing mobile first and then going up, I know it might not look like it, but that's the way it is. And because of that, I want to set the logo to be centered in the middle, the search bar and the items might need to be centered as well. But let's center it for now. And to do this, we can use Bootstrap so we can display the logo div here as flex. So we can do D flex and then justify content dash center dash content dash center. And if we save this, refresh the browser, you will see that the logo is now in the middle. But when we go up, the logo still stays in the middle. And that's not how I want it. I want the logo to be on the left side after we go like a tablet mode or like a desktop mode. To do this, I can give it a medium uh, kind of like media query. Uh, so we can do justify content. And then we can do MD start. So after the MD media query, this the logo should go to the start. So if you refresh, we have the logo at the start. And if you go down, you will see that the logo is in the middle now, which is pretty cool. 
we definitely need to add a little bit of like maybe padding on the, the logo. So we could do padding bottom two, save this, refresh. Something like this, obviously we'll have to play around, but I don't want to waste too much time. The search is actually taking full width now, which is okay. Technically this is set medium 12, five, but it's not set to, maybe we need to set col dash small 12 um, to be safe. I mean, all of them need to be like that, but it doesn't seem to be making much difference. So let's just one here. That's taking 12 as well. So let's do a little bit of padding on this one as well. Padding top of two pixels or three. Let's have a look. Uh, that's looking good. Um, we can definitely do the same for this one here. So let's copy the deflex center. And then actually let's copy the whole thing. And what I'll do is we already have deflex justify end. So what I'm going to do is do def deflex justify content center for mobile. And after mobile, we want to do justify content media, medium media query and then end. And hopefully we refresh now. We have this in the middle and if we go up, we have it on the right side, which is pretty cool. This doesn't seem to be a uh, center line, and I think it's because I actually removed the thing from the row. Okay. Yeah, I think I removed earlier. Or I had to, I had to re add this uh, align item center to the row just to make everything in the middle. And that's okay for now. So let's continue to save a little bit of time. The next thing that we need to do is the menu. So for the menu, we're going to have a solid color and then the items. As you saw earlier, we already have some of the items in here. So we can definitely speed up the process for this and let's go. So under header.php, let's scroll down and you will see this nav. So for the nav, let's remove this. Let's paste it out a little bit so you can see. So for the nav, there are a couple of things that I want to do. Um, first of all, first of all, let's add the background for this navigation. So we can do, so we can do background dash primary, and this will make the background navigation color of the nav, the purple color that we have, the primary color that we have here. And let's see what else we need to do. We need to center align everything in the middle. So for this, we're going to use our trusty container. So let's do dot container. And inside the container is where we'll be adding all of this. So we have a button that is actually used for mobile and we have the actual navigation bar. For the container, I want to justify everything in the middle. So let's make sure that this is set to d-flex and then justify content center. So that will center everything in the middle. For the button, and the actual button and the actual links. I'm thinking of actually creating a row. So when we go on mobile, let me show you, let's refresh. You're not going to be able to see the links now because we need to change the colors there here. But if we were to go on mobile, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this button here is on top and then we have the items at the bottom. So they expand at the moment, as you can see this, actually works. It has the JavaScript to expand the menu. Of course, you can't see them, but uh, we'll fix this in a second. So let's do that. So let's create, maybe there is an easier way to do this, but let's just create a row and this will have two columns. So first of all, let's create a call of 12. And then we want to justify this to like, we want to center align this so we can do maybe the flex and then justify content and then center. And then inside here is where I'm gonna add this button. And then we need one more for the menu. So let's do class of call-12. And for this, let's do text align center. Text center and add the menu inside here. Let's Make it a little bit better, um, something like this. That would do. It's a little bit messy now. If we save this and go back, 
hopefully if we click on this you will see that it's expanding down which is good we just need to edit the button a little bit so i'm going to do that and also we need to change some of the links so let's go back to the website and go to appearance menus so let's create menu one and we can assign this menu one to our primary menu and save so technically speaking if we go back and refresh you will see that our menu is coming up we can quickly change them with css so if we were to go to main.css we can do maybe like we know that we have uh, if we inspect the website you will see that we have a main navigation class name here and then we have we have a current item menu and then inside we have a link so we can start this super quickly let's do that and if you go back to the main.css we can do maybe like let's do main menu close it and then for the main menu let's do main main dash navigation and then what i want to do is set the font weight to be a little bit bolder so 600 i believe was one of them and also we need to set the current item let's change all the links to be white so a and then we can do color and to use the white variable color from bootstrap we can do we can do var and then inside here we can do dash dash bootstrap dash white like so uh, if you were to save this and go back refresh this should take a second and you, you can see that we are now seeing the text and the next bit and let's go back to the css and do the current link the current page that we're on uh, you might want to do something better than this but i'm just going to underline it for now you can do anything like uh, i don't know a border or a background color or whatever so i mean technically speaking let's do that actually let's do current item dash menu item and then inside this current menu item and maybe we can just change the background color to this to be something else um i don't know let's copy this color here and let's just change it ever so slightly uh, so that would be background color and then rgb and then let's just change it to i don't know a light one yeah something like this would do let's have a look or maybe we can just underline the link okay okay as you can see this works kind of it's like you can see which one is selected so that's good maybe we can just give every single link um a little bit of padding so we could do instead of doing the a we could do uh you, we could use the menu dash item and in fact oh, okay menu dash item is the actual list so it would be best to give the padding to the actual link so they're easier to press instead of doing this okay so let's do i don't know padding of zero top and bottom or actually let's do padding of one rem so 16 top and bottom and 1.4 rem to left and right i'm not sure what that is i'm just guessing need to refresh sometimes it takes ages i i am zoomed in quite a bit so this is how it's looking so this is what we get i mean this is a little bit bigger than what i would like the design is a little bit smaller i don't want to measure it and waste too much time but maybe 0 0.6 and refresh okay that's a little bit better and the buttons are now easier to press obviously it's going to be nice to get a hover as well so we could potentially do this and add a hover effect so hover and i can use this for the hover effect as well maybe uh, but you probably know how to do this so i'm gonna leave it okay so we got a hover effect as well it's looking good uh some animations would be nice and if we go to a specific page you will see that the, the current page will be 
active will have this color. And this is actually looking all right because uh, it's using the Wacom Masters, but we'll get to there later. So we're still here. We're pretty much done with this for desktop, but if we go down on mobile, you will see that we have the button and then we have the links in here. Now, the issue is that they're actually, they're actually in a container, so we could potentially take him, take them off of container if you wanted to. If you, if we want that to be full screen, we have to take out the container. Oh, that's a little bit annoying, but let's leave it because it works. And let's just change this to a better looking menu. So I'm going to do inspect and go back to mobile. And let's see how we can change this to make it a little bit better. So in the header, we have it as a button menu toggle. Now this class is actually used, class is actually used to expand the menu. So we definitely don't want to change this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this class to modify the button a little bit. And let me space it like this so you can see. And then inside here, I'm also going to add an icon. So let's do an icon with the class of bi and then bi last. And then let's close and then i to close the icon. Sorry, not last list. So this will be like a hamburger icon if we refresh. Uh, yep, you will see that's looking good. But let's just change this to make it slightly better and continue. Obviously, you can spend a little bit more time to make it nice. Main navigation. So we could use this. And inside here, we can do dot menu toggle. And for the menu toggle, let's do background color of primary color. And then let's do color of white. You can actually use the variable white, I think, as well. So that should be OK. And if we refresh, we kind of get a nice menu. Maybe we can remove the border. Let's see if we add border zero. OK, border zero will do or border none. Yeah, both of them will work. So let's do uh, border none. Border none like this. Save this. Uh, refresh, see whether it works. Um, it doesn't seem to... Okay, it's working. I think it just took a second. So that's working. The menu is working quite nicely. Um, could make it slightly bigger. Um, we could potentially could potentially create a custom one position, this one at the top, because it's, this setter could definitely be a little bit better. Maybe that could be positioned there, but I will leave it for now and continue. But as you can see, it's quite responsive. It's looking good so far. And let's have a look at what's next on the list. One thing that I spotted is that I have the underlines here and I think I did fix them, but I must have done Control and Z. And to fix this, we can go to the header.php and where the links are, we can just give it a class names of, of text decoration none. So text decoration dash none. And if I copy this, to the other one as well. Uh, that should fix the issue. Let me close some of the other stuff. And yeah, so that fixes the issue. The next thing that we need to do is this slider here. Now I'm going to go a little bit lazy on this and do it as a bootstrap slider, but I'm only going to put the image inside. And the reason I wanted to do this is because that would allow you to technically do more creative banners. If you want to have the text here for SEO purposes, it won't be too hard to do because all you have to do is container, row, and then position this to the left with the, the flex uh, justifier and align it to the middle. So it's not too hard to do, but to speed up the process, I'm going to do it with images and show you how to do the slider. To be able to use the bootstrap slider, we're going to have to get the JavaScript stuff. So if you go back to bootstrap, get started and find where the JavaScript is. So JS, um, if we scroll down, nope, if you scroll up, um, Okay, yeah, this is what we need. So we need this popper.min.js file and we need this bootstrap one. So if we get the first one, first of all, and let's open functions.php and let's make some space. Um, what we can do is actually, 
we can do the navigation first and then we'll do the bootstrap ones. So let's paste the first link and let's go back and grab the second link here. So I'm going to grab that and paste it. And now what we can do if I minimize this, if I duplicate this line here, which is WNQ script, what I can do is change this one to bootstrap popper. Grab the link from here and replace it inside here, which means that we won't need the template directory. So we can remove it. And also we don't need this. And inside the array, we just need to put, we just need to put jQuery. So with single brackets, just put jQuery. Like so, save. Let's duplicate this and replace it with the bootstrap minified JavaScript file. So let's do that. And loading it from the CDN means that it will be pretty fast. And many other people have probably already loaded, so it will be even faster. Um, so this needs to be changed as well to bootstrap, maybe script. And last but not least, we need to create a custom script just in case we need to do something. And actually, we will need to do something. So let's do another line. But this time, I'm going to have to use the get template URI and then do it here and then replace all this with the file. So it will be in the JS folder. And then I'm going to create a file called script.js. And that needs to be changed to something else. So we can do that and then script. The name of the website and then script. Save this and let's create this file. So js script.js. Uh, inside js, we go and create script.js and save. All right, save this. We're going to need it, so don't close it just yet. And we need the front page as well because we're going to start working on the front page. For the front page, we're not going to need, we're going to need the header, we're going to need the footer, but we won't need all of this. As we're not going to use Gutenberg, we're going to do a custom front page. And technically speaking, I wonder whether we can do sections inside the main. Let's do that. We can do different sections inside the main. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the footer so it doesn't get in the way for now. But later on, we'll get to it and edit it. So save this. Refresh the page just to make sure everything is working. And yeah, that's great. OK, we're going to have the slider here. So if you go to Bootstrap and look for slider or carousel, carousel here, it pops up. How it works, slides only. So I'm going to scroll down and find the one that is animated. Which one was it? OK, must have missed it. It's. I think this one, I don't know why it has so much padding. Um, do the other ones have? Yeah, okay. Cool, okay, I think this one will do. So let's do the dark variant. So I'm going to copy all this from Bootstrap, paste it inside here. I know it's a lot of divs, but what I have to do now is this so good? Yeah, that's looking good. Um, what I can do now is if we go back to Bootstrap and scroll down, you can see the way you can use it and uh, all the other options that you can add, like the keyboard, intervals, uh, pause, and so on. But I'm going to save a little bit of time and just go for the absolute basic here. So I'm going to copy this JavaScript and paste this into scripts.js. And, we'll, and we need to replace this document query selector with this one here. So this ID we can add to scripts and save. So if we save this as well and go back to the front page, you will see that we are getting the slider and things are moving around. Obviously, it's a little bit broken, so we're going to have to fix that. That's all looking good. It's working. Let's replace it. Let's replace the images. Um, actually, yeah, you can replace this with the text if you wish to, but I'm going to be lazy and just do images. I think for SEO purposes, 100% go with the text, uh, but for creativity, just images. 
and I'll show you an example. If we go to Amazon, you will see that they have this as an image. And the reason for this is, is because they can be a little bit more creative with what uh, they design. But yeah, that's pretty much the reason I'm doing it. Okay, so I've already prepared images. So here the images slider I have, uh, they extracted from Adobe XD. Um, actually they look okay. I wonder if they're gonna be blurry, but yeah, let's get the slider images and let's go back to the project folder. So that would, we don't have an images folder, so let's create one. IMG for short and inside images folder, I'm gonna paste the slider uh, images. I'm gonna remove this diff here and replace the image. To replace the image, I want to go to the directory. So I'm gonna have to use PHP and let's do echo get underscore template underscore uh, directory underscore URI and then close this and then we can do we can close the PHP and then we can do slash uh, images IMG slider and then slash slider dash one I believe dot JPEG or I think there is a bigger one. Let's have a look. Images, slide. Okay, slide one. Slide one dot JPEG. Uh, there is a bigger version if it's blurry, but let's go for this. Save, refresh. And as you can see, this is looking a little bit too big, but it's actually pretty cool. So let's replace the other images as well. Um, I'm going to grab this and for the second one, let's do the same. Remove the text, uh, paste this one here and I actually have only two slides. So let's remove this one. And yeah, that will do. I do have only two slides. So this will be image two. Okay. So we have the first image. We have the second image and they are ridiculously big, but that's fine. Um, as you can see, we have a lot. We might have to remove the third button now. Let's remove it. Uh, these are the buttons at the bottom here. So if we refresh, yeah, these are the buttons here. We might also want to make these images as uh, links, but we'll do that in a second. So let's first of all put this in a container so it's not so big. So to do this, we can actually create a section. Should have done that in the first place, but Basically, we want to wrap this in a separate section and let's do section with a class name of container and let's give it a padding bottom of five just to space out all the sections and let's close the section like so and let's plug in everything inside so it's a little bit tidier. All right, let's refresh. And as you can see, uh, because we are in the container now, this is contained and, and it's actually using the image height in order to do the slider. Everything is looking blurry, which I don't like. This is because it's, we are obviously using JPEG and so at some point it will be properly sharp. Yeah, it's the size I think. Uh, but it is what it is inside here. As I said, you can add text and definitely we need to change these ones to white and plug them in inside a little bit. That's all good. One thing that I noticed is that we have a little bit of space at the top. So I definitely want to add a little bit of space. Let's have a look at how to do that. So padding bottom five, padding top, I don't know, three, I'm guessing here, but um, yeah, <clears throat> three or four will do. Okay, four is a little bit better. And I want to also give our slider border radius and we need to make overflow hidden. Do I have to do this on every single, no, I don't have to do that. I can do it on the actual slider maybe. So where the class is at, we can do overflow hidden. And maybe round it. 
of, I don't know, uh, two or three. I don't know which one works at the moment. Let's have a look. Uh, that did work, that's perfect. But what I want to do is I want to create custom rounded boxes because most of the, my design, as you can see in here, is using border radius of 20. And I've done that on purpose actually, just so I can show you how you can do that with Bootstrap. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of a modification if you wanted to do just maybe like rounded. So we don't have to do one, rounded one, rounded two, rounded three. Uh, they are not rounded enough for design. So let me show you. If this works for you, leave it. Uh, you can, uh, but um, but I want to show you how you can do a custom one to modify the rounded class. We're gonna have to go on top here, on top of the bootstrap import, and and we're gonna have to edit the rounded utilities. Now let me show you something. If you go to bootstrap and go to where was it? SCSS and then utilities. We want to find round it, I think. Okay, this is it. So we want to run uh, to find this, copy this, and inside here, and paste it inside here. We're not gonna use, we're only gonna use this as an example. So if you go to Bootstrap and find customize, uh, I think utilities. Can you do utilities? Okay, utilities, and then maybe borders. I don't think that they have options around it. Uh, no. Border radius, maybe. Okay, this is it. So uh, they don't actually have an example of this, uh, I think. Okay, they have an example somewhere, but it's a different one. And I just figured it out a little bit. So what we have to do is we have to use this and then we can do a dollar sign utilities, a column, and then open with brackets and inside, make sure you close this. And inside the brackets, we need to pass round it just like so column, and then inside another bracket, we need to put property, just like we have it in here. And the property that, and the property is board radius. And then we need to add the class name of rounded. And we need to add the values. So values is where I'm gonna modify the values for my needs. So uh, in brackets here, we can do new, which means every time you type round it, this is the new one, the new one, I want to set it as one rem, for example. And let's say that I wanted to, and the problem with this now is that it's going to overwrite everything else as well. There are a lot of different ones, as you can see, like, a, where is it, like, I think round it zero, one, two, three, and circle and so on. But I think that this is going to overwrite everything. So if you wanted to keep the circle, you're actually gonna have to do circle like so and do 50% and that would work as well. So if we if we now go to the front page and we do round it on this the rounded border should be much bigger than it is now. Let's refresh. And as you can see, this worked straight away. So this is how you would modify some of the utilities. I'm going to be removing this now. Let's remove this from here. Actually, yeah, you can see new, zero, one, two, three, circle, and so on. I didn't even notice it, but yeah. Um, you can use this as a guide and yeah, that's all cool. Let's save this. And let's see what else we need to do. All right, the other thing I would probably do is modify these uh, arrows. Let's have a look at what class are they using. Let's see, so carousel control. Okay, they're using um, carousel control preview icon and next 
here so we could potentially do that and i want to modify the width of them just so they go a little bit to the left i wonder whether to modify the color mm, we could do uh, but let's leave it okay so let's modify that a little bit so main navigation we're gonna have to start a new one so this will be i don't know let's say slider uh, this could be home page actually. Um, from page and then, yeah. Okay, that would work. So we know that we have a carousel. Yeah, carousel class. So let's grab that. Carousel. And inside the carousel, I'm going to do the carousel control preview and carousel control next. So let's do carousel control preview. Uh, actually, we can do them on one line because uh, we want to change the width for both. And then we can do with a comma, we can do dot carousel control dot next. And then inside here, we do width of something like 9%, percent, keyboard has changed. Okay, 9% and save. If we go back, uh, refresh again. Sometimes it takes a little while. Maybe I've misspelled something. Uh, yeah. Carousel, carousel, save. Okay, they moved a little bit to the left, so they look a little bit better now. Um, another thing that this is obviously going to be um, responsive, but to be completely honest with you, I would probably hide this one on mobile and create totally different, totally different images, or actually do this with text and style it for mobile, and then go uh, your way up and so on but in but i consider this as done for now maybe if you wanted to make links we can do that by going back to the front page and where the image is we can just do a href and then just create a I don't know, blank link for now and then let's close this and then we can do the same for the other one so a href and then blank link i think there was a better way of doing blank links i'm not sure and then let's save this and yeah as you can see this is now a link so you can link it to a different page and if we click on this as long as the z thing is on this is better bigger that should be good and we can now focus on the next section all right the next section is popular products this should be an easy one i'm gonna copy the title and let's go and create a new section underneath here I'm going to do a little bit of space for you to see better and concentrate on each section at the time. All right, for the popular products, we can do another section. And then that section will have the class name of container. And the reason for this is this section is going to be white. So it can be, uh, it's okay to be constrained to uh, the width. Um, and then we need to close this section. Do that. Bit messy. And then inside this section, so many tabs. Inside this section, we need a title. So let's do h1 with the class name of uh, text dash center and padding top five to, to space out everything a little bit. And let's close the h1. And this will be popular products then we can create a paragraph uh, close the paragraph as well and inside the paragraph we can just copy the text from the design which is going to be the same everywhere so let's do that and the two ways of doing this i think the good way is to constrain this width uh, to a certain to a certain size so the text wraps or you can do the lazy way and just like add a breakpoint somewhere around here and if we refresh 
you will see that this breaks it. Uh, we need a little bit more space. What can I add? Let me add a container with padding top five or okay, just to make some space. Okay, just to make some space so we can see but yeah as you can see this is now on two lines but yeah i would potentially constrain this uh, to the width and i think bootstrap this half class with midi grease i think bootstrap this half uh i think you can do for example on the p class we can do a class and I can't remember what it was it was width and then the number and maybe 20 I don't know what that would do let's have a look uh, it's not doing much uh, I wonder what I, I think this was 20 percent so let's have a look okay here we go bootstrap sizing so we could do uh, 25 apparently I think this looks like, okay, so undersizing. Okay, so under utilities, there needs to be a sizing one. And okay, this is what I was thinking. We could use the maybe 25 or 50%. So width 25, let's see what that is. Um, width 25, and I wonder whether I need to do anything else. Uh, D inline block potentially. Or is this for the height? Let's have a look at how this works. Okay, this worked actually. And now we probably just need to like center align this somehow. We need to kind of like put this into a row, I think, and then we can justify it in the middle, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but yeah, hey, let's do that. So we have a container, we have a div with a class of row, and then we can maybe do the uh, flex and then justify justify content center close this row like so and as you can see this is now aligned but maybe um, it's looking a little bit ugly if I'm honest for some reason maybe we can do a 50 I don't really like how this looks, um, so I'm gonna stick to my other. So I'm gonna stick to my other option, which is just doing a breakpoint here. Uh, but this is the way that you might want to do it. So I'm gonna remove this because I just don't like the look of it. Um, and save. Let's go. And that needs to be text align center. So class instead of with 25 let's do text center save this and refresh okay that's much better looking to me and now we need to create another div for the products so that would be an easy one we can do a div with the class of uh, padding top of five just to space out things padding bottom five and then inside here we can add or first walk on my shortcode, which I will show you where to find. So, so if you go to the docs.wokomers.com documents slash walk on my shortcodes, this is where you can find a lot of the shortcodes and how you can use them. So as you can see here, they have a lot of examples. You can definitely do it with PHP as well if you're gonna do some custom crazy stuff, but this is so, but you can do so much with this. I'm just gonna show you quickly. So for example, we can just get the products. So um, yeah, we can just get the products and that would work. But also we can set how many columns we want and maybe we can set the limit. So the columns, the columns is actually set to four as default and and yeah, you can limit the products as well. So what I'm gonna do is copy this, paste the shortcode in here, 
but that won't work like this because this is just text at the moment. So if I was to save this and go back, you'll see that it's just gonna appear as text. So what we need to do is convert this. Um, and to do this, we're gonna have to do PHP echo show code, do, sorry, do underscore show code. And then inside here is where we add the show code, like so. And we close this, oh, we close this, we close the PHP, but I need to put this in single quotes as well. So like so, and save. Let's clean it up a little bit and let's finish this show code. So I said that we want columns of four and we want a limit of four, which is the default. So we definitely, we don't need to set that. But if we save this, refresh, you will see that we're getting the products and they're looking pretty cool. Let's finish the other sections first of all, and then we can have a look at how we can actually customize all this without breaking anything, the proper way of doing it. So the next section here would be categories. Uh, this is hopefully is gonna be a quick one as well. What I'm gonna do is whack these as images, use the border, custom border that we created, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but these are basically gonna be a different links and you can make a better design uh, on this, of course, which is an example. Section, let's create a new section. And, and as always inside this section, let me space out everything. Okay, and let's remove this. Okay, so inside this section, Sorry, this is not going to be a class container. So we're going to put the container inside because we actually have a background color here. So we're going to change. So let's see how we can do that. So let's copy this. And instead of container, let's do section of class categories. Uh, let's give it a padding of top five, padding of bottom five. We can, inside here, we can do container. And then we can start by doing the same thing as here. So let's grab this and paste this. So for the H1, we can say, what is it? Uh, categories. And I'm going to leave the text as it is because I don't have another one. And now we can start creating the categories. So we're going to make this responsive as well with Bootstrap. Um, let's have a look at how we can do that. So, so technically speaking, if we look at the design, we can have, oh, excuse me, we can have two rows. So the first row will contain three columns and then the second row will contain two columns. Let's do that. So we can do dot row for the first one here. And this row, we can give a class name of category row. I don't know. Okay, this row, this row will have padding top of five and padding bottom of. Actually, no, we don't want padding bottom on the row. We want padding on the actual items. So let's do this as padding top only. And then inside here, we're going to create a custom class called categories columns. So let's do dot categories underscore co underscore underscore co just to make it consistent and this column on medium screens will go for co we'll go for co dash md4 and for small screens we'll go co dash small 12 so it's full screen on um, mobile devices and for the extra small actually do we need to set extra small probably not let's try it like this and and inside each column we're gonna have it as a link so href and then a link and each link will have an image image source and then we need to add the source soon in a second uh, we need to add an old and we probably need to add some classes as well. So I'm going to add them class in here so we can see it a little bit better. 
Let's close the image. And also what I want to do is make sure that those images are loading lazy. It's loading lazy. So the reason I'm doing the actual boxes uh, with an image inside and the text, which I'm going to add now, is because if we add the image as a background image to the container, we can't actually load it lazy. So that's why I'm, I'm doing it this way. Loading equals lazy is basically going to help with performance. And we can put all text and images and so on. I think it's going to be a little bit better. So that's why I'm going to do it this way. But saying this, let's quickly add title and talk about this. So let's put H2 and the first one was uh, toys and then foods. Okay, the first one is toys. And let's talk about this. Now, now this could be a little bit of a problem because technically speaking, we are wrapping uh, everything inside the link. I think that the correct way of doing it would be uh, for screen readers and usability and stuff and actually search engines probably like uh, the link it would be nice if the h2 was outside the link so it can be read as an h2 tag and then we put the link inside it but saying this hopefully that would be okay it's just a little bit lazy i think this is some information that you might want to look up so let's leave it as it is and Let's concentrate on doing the first one. Because if we do the first one correctly, and we can copy it three times, that would be done. But let's get an image first of all. To get an image, we can actually scroll up and get this. So we want to go to the template directory. Uh, where is this source? We want to go to the template directory. And then where is images? Let's open the folder. Images and inside here I'm gonna add a few images so categories. I think these are the ones that I'm gonna be using. So let's add that. Categories. Let's open them. Actually, I'm gonna open them in here so I can see their names. And the first one will be so we have to go images and then categories. Could have made this shorter. And the first one is toys and then JPEG. I think they're fairly small images, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, obviously, all text is important, loading lazy is important, and we'll add certain classes in a second. So let's have a look at what we get. Uh, we get the first one here. Uh, for some reason, it's not in a container. Uh, okay, so yeah. Okay, I need to wrap everything inside this container, I believe. And I wonder whether I need to wrap this in another row. So we'll see. Seems to be working, so that's all good. So let's do a lot of bootstrap styling to this. So on this row, we have everything good. We need to style the actual href here. So let's add a class. And this class is going to have of co-medium screen 12. Then we're going to do width needs to be set to 100%. The height needs to be set to 100%. We can then display this as inline block. Put a padding of three uh, around there. So we space each category. And then we can do this as position relative dash. And then we can do round it. And we, this rounded class is the one that we made earlier. And now we can do overflow hidden so the rounded boxes work. Um, we actually need to make the, the image positioned absolute. And I want to make the image uh, to fit the actual object. So what I'm going to do is let's do, for the image, let's do position absolute. Top zero, um, bottom zero, then end will be zero, and start will be zero. Save this, let's refresh, see what happens. 
And as you can see, the border radius is not working, but we're gonna have to modify this a little bit with some custom styling. So let's do that quickly. So in main.scss, let's go and do, let's copy this comment and let's do categories. I'm sure there is a better way of doing comments, but oh well. And then we can, if you remember for the category, I used categories. So let's copy this. Actually, don't need this, don't need this, don't need this. So let's copy this and paste it categories. And inside the categories, I want to have this background color. So I'm gonna save a little bit of time, just grab it from here and do background color, paste the color here. Let's do category row, category, sorry, row. And then, well, it should have been category, but it's too late now, it's categories. And category row, inside the category row, we have a column, so we can do and and it's going to co. And now we can say each column maybe can be a height of 212 pixels, that's it. For the image, in, actually, yeah, for the image inside the column, we can say width needs to be 100% and object fit needs to be set to cover or contain. Let's have a look at this first of all. Save. Uh, we get the background color, but this doesn't seem to be working. I wonder, I wonder what is this? So we have row. Oh, you know what? I think this is not correct. It's dot categories and then underscore underscore co. I think that might work. Nope. Categories co. That's cool. Um, Categories, co, height. Uh, okay, sorry, this categories row doesn't exist. So let's remove it. I, I was thinking I made one. Um, let's remove it. And that would work. Okay, I just messed it up a little bit. But save this. Refresh. Okay, that's a little bit better. But because we're developing mobile first, and then we want to go up. I might want to make this height to be equals the same as on the design. So on mobile, we can make it smaller, but if you want to make it bigger on desktop or different media query, what we can do is include a media query. So let's do include. And the media query will be media dash breakpoint. And this one will be up. So anything uh, from medium and up, we want the categories column here to have a bigger height. So height of something like 336 pixels and save. So this should be bigger now. Yep. If we go down, as you can see, it's gone down to a smaller one, I believe. Yeah, I think this is working. So this is all pretty good. Um, the image is a little bit smaller. Uh, I do have this contained, I think. Uh, but yeah, well, these are things that you can always mess around with. Not so important at the moment. Now for the text, we want to add some sort of a background so it's a little bit more readable. I don't really like the design so much, but let's do it anyway. So let's do H2 and let's do class of position absolute. bottom of zero, start of zero, um, end of zero, and then padding of two, margin bottom needs to be set to two because as default headings have a margin at the bottom, so that's why I'm resetting it. And then we want to text align this to the center. And we also want to make the background color to primary. And we also want to set the text to white. Save this, have a look at what we get. All right, this is looking pretty cool. One thing that we could change is on the original design, we have the color set to 
So what I could do is create a custom one with Bootstrap. So if you go back to the top where we add more colors, I could potentially create a custom one. So let's copy this one here just to show you. So we can do primary and then opacity to, I don't know, this is probably really bad, opacity to eight. And what I'm gonna do RGB, set alpha as well. And then for alpha, we're gonna do 0 0.8 as 80%. And now I can actually use this. So let me show you. If I save this, actually, yeah, I do need to add it here. So let's copy this line and do primary opacity eight, maybe. Great naming, copy this, save it here and save. Then let me show you how we can use it. If you go back to the front page, we can potentially do background primary and then we can set opacity to eight if you wanted to do that. So let's save, refresh. And as you can see, it's getting transparent. So that's the way you might want to do it. So of course, all this is, this is going to be a link. Um, and now I can potentially just copy this and just change the image and the name. So let's do that. So we need two more, one, two, a lot of space. So the first one is toys. The second one is food. <clears throat> My voice is going now. And the third one is care. And then for this one, I think it's just food.jpg. I think for this one is just care.jpg and nothing important is hiding there, but I can do view toggle wrap, it's just ugly now. Let's refresh and we get food and we get care. One thing that I noticed is that I didn't change the titles, but I hopefully I'll remember to change that later. And now let's do the rest two. So the rest two will be quite similar. We're gonna do a row, uh, this row, we're gonna do a row here, another row. This one won't have the padding of, uh, we won't have padding top. Um, so let's do closing. And this row will have margin bottom, maybe margin bottom of three. And inside here, we can copy one of them columns, but we need to change them a little bit. So this one will be medium four, small 12. That's fine, yeah, I think that's fine. And then maybe margin bottom of three. I might have to do that on every single one actually. So I can do margin bottom three, margin bottom three, margin bottom three. Um, this will be okay, I believe, um, but we need one more. So this will be four and the other one will be eight because we have a 12 column grid. Medium, this will be eight. And on small devices, I wanted to take full width. So that's fine, 12 is fine. Let's refresh and see what we get. Um, this is perfect. So if we were to scale down the browser, you will see that they're scaling. Uh, the images are not fitting. So we definitely need to do another media query, uh, but you can see that our small media query is working, which is fine. I mean. A little bit ugly. Uh, you can see that our media query is working. So you might just want to add different media queries or make them different sizes just to make them a little bit better. But uh, you know how to do this now anyway. You can just add more media queries and make the size of the columns or whatever you like. Now, now that we now now let's change the images for the rest and finish this off. So. One, two, care is where we need to be. Care, we need to change the image. Oh, that's fine. Okay, so the next one we need to change is this one here. So that needs to be changed to accessories. Um, let's say accessories. I can copy this, change it here. Uh, it will be a small letter, I think. And then the last one will be special offers. So we can do special offers and, and save this. Let's go. Uh, that's looking good. The special offers image is not 
appearing, maybe I misspelled it. Uh, so we have special with L and that should work. All right, this is all looking good. For the special offer, we could potentially do something like this. Uh, that would be fairly easy to do. Um, we could, so as long as this is relative, uh, which it is, I think I've said it's relative somewhere, yeah. Position relative, which means that this, actually this is absolute. We could potentially do top to be 50, start to be zero. Uh, we don't need bottom. In this case, we could do a zero margin bottom, but in that's fine, text align. Let's have a look at what we get now. Okay, we could do this or we could do another diff, which goes all the way around with the background color of red. So to do this, we might have to do like, we might have to just create another div maybe. Let's uh, see how it goes. We could do a div here and position it absolute and make the background color as red. So that would be BG primary maybe just for now. And then we can do position top and start at zero. Um, and let's have a look. Maybe we need to change the Z index. So background primary, uh, it seems to be working. Just maybe Z index. Yeah, it's a Z index one. Yeah, so I'm just going to give it a style. Maybe, maybe this is the way you use actually. So style and then Z index of one. Let's uh, refresh this. And as you can see, this is working now. I'll have to create a red color for this column. So, so let me grab this red. And let's just extend uh, another color uh, for, I don't know sale and I'll just do that for now uh, to speed up this process. So let's do that and then gray and then we can do uh, sale and then we can do sale. All right, this should speed up the process. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually give this a custom class. So this would be a uh, category called sale. And what I can do is at the bottom here, categories, category, co, uh, we can do another one. We can do sale and then we can give it the, can be sale. Actually, let's try to give this uh, background sale. Let's see if this works. Okay, that worked actually. So we could do this and then we can display the text and we can display the text on top after it. Uh, it's a little bit of a, effort here, but let's have a look. So let's do special for Z index of two. Okay, I broke this, but yeah, if you do Z index of two, sorry, inside, I've broken this. So outside this, Z in, sorry, style equals Z index of two. If we do that, uh, we get the special offers. Um, that needs to be a little bit better center line for sure. Um, and I think this is might be because of this top. It needs to be changed a little bit. But what I'm going to do is just quickly fix this color here to RGB. A and then change this to 0 0.8 or whatever, something like this. Um, yeah, you can see the dog now. And then what I'm going to do is put in top. Let's remove this, the color. Uh, we can set it to white and something like this will work. And obviously I, I think you will need, I wonder if he has margins and stuff like that. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more work, but you get the point here. So we could uh, potentially do that and add the rest of the text, uh, style it the way we want. Um, but let's move on to the next section. So the next section, luckily, is going to be quite easy, just like the top one. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy this top section here, which we have the popular products. I probably need to comment everything, but it's kind of readable anyway. That needs to go down. So I'm going to copy this section and quickly replicate it here. I wonder what this is. section, section, section. Okay, 
this is another section, so we need to tidy it up. Um, and I'm going to paste this section of popular products and change it to special offers. So copy special offers, and then if we refresh, we'll have special offers in here. And to do the special offers, and uh, to do the special offer, we could potentially do a specific category for this. Um, and which makes me think that for the top one, we could have done here for the products, we could have done uh, popularity. So based on popularity, um, and that would be done. And yeah, for the special offers, we could just do a different uh, like a sale maybe category. Let's have a look at that. Uh, sale products, maybe, or best selling products. That's a good one. Uh, let's have a look. So let's replace the show code. Um, actually, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need the uh, columns and so on. So let's do that. Save it. And yeah, they should be they they are products that are on sale, which you can see, which is good. Okay, so we could potentially get get away with doing this. Uh, I would like to have a little bit more spacing, like here. Uh, definitely a little bit more spacing. So let's have a look at whether we can do that. Uh, maybe container. Can we do adding top five? I don't know. Yeah, that that's working so much better already. So I like this. That's fine. Uh, we can potentially add sliders, but I think this tutorial is going to go for too long, so we won't do that. And we have one more section, which is the footer. The footer will be easy to start, but we need to do custom widgets for each area, so this is customizable. So let's have a look at how we can do that. All right, let's go back to our code, Visual Studio Code, and find footer. So footer will be around here. So let's open the footer page. Um, we probably don't need the front page for now, and that's all good. So there are a few things that we could keep from here, and there are a few things that we can just remove. I'm actually going to remove pretty much everything from here. So for the uh, site info, yeah, I'm going to remove everything from site info and start clean. All right. Let's start by doing the color. So we already know how to do this. So we're going to do class name or background primary. We need to add the text to be white. Padding top to be five, padding bottom to be five. And then inside here is where we're going to be having our rows and columns. So let's create a container. So let's do container and okay, let's have a container and inside this container, we're going to have a row. So row, we're going to have a row and then inside this row, we're going to have a column of two, which is going to be the first one that would be, let's have a look. Then we're about company and keep in touch. So we have about, then we're going to have another column here. Let me space it out a little bit. Company, and I think the other one was uh, keep in touch. Something like this. Uh, save this. We need to modify this a little bit. This will be two, this will be two, and I want this one to be four, but I want this one to be slightly bigger, but I want it to be on the right side of the screen. So to alter that, we can do, um, actually we can do column, medium four, and then we can do MS outer, which will push it to the right. Uh, okay, and this is not working because this is our homepage, but we removed the footer from the homepage. So let's go back homepage and just uncomment this. Uh, and obviously we need to fix a little bit of the section here, remove this spacer, uh, yeah, definitely need to tidy up a little bit, but yeah, save this. And if we go back, we should be able to get the footer. Uh, so about company, keep in touch is looking the same as here. Keep in touch is with big letter, doesn't really matter for now, uh, but that's all looking cool. The next bit, let's first of all uh, finish off the rest. So we're going to have like a copyright message and this visa image here. 
So what we can do is let's create another row. So inside here, actually we can do that because we need to be outside this because we want, uh, this is having a background color of primary. So we want to be outside this, unfortunately. Uh, that would have saved us a little bit of time, but. Okay, so we're gonna have to have another one in here. It's not a problem. What we're gonna do is class container. And then this class container will have the pilot top of two, padding bottom of two. Inside here, we can create a row. So row, let's align everything uh, in the middle so we can do deflex, align items, and then uh, center. And then inside here is where we're gonna have our columns. So let's do quick two ones, call one uh, here, which will be like a copyright. So we can do, what was it? Uh, in paragraph, we can do ampersand, and then copy. And then we can do something like PHP, uh, blog info, and that would be uh, inside name, that would get the name of the blog. And this, we can do PHP echo, let's echo the date. And then inside here, this will be the year. Uh, this will output the year, so copyright and the year. And then we can do something like create it by, and then a link to your website, so href to something like https ready code ek. Um, this could be targets uh, equals underscore underscore blank. Let me do the view and toggle wrap. Close this. Uh, tag it blank. And what else are we missing here? So this is a link. So this will be ready, something like this, and close the link. Um, that's all looking good. Then for the next column, let's do the image of the payments. So we can do, uh, let's do a call and call, excuse me. And this column can have the height of 25. I don't know if, no, that's 25%, I believe. Um, let's try it. So we can do the inline block and then text and to push the image to the right corner. And then we need the image. So for the image, we can do IMG source equals, and then as always PHP, echo and then get template directory and then URI and then we need to fill the rest of the URL so that would be image and then inside images I need to add the payment image actually so it will be this one payment method so let me copy this go back and uh, we can just put in images in payment methods dot png so image payments dash method dot png. Um, definitely the node tag. I'm gonna add this here. And we might want to make this image fluid. So let's do a class of image fluid. Like so. And also, we might as well put loading equals lazy. And that should be good, I think. And if I'm not missing anything, we should be good to go. Let's save this and have a look. Uh, we are getting an error. And this is get templates. Okay, I must have made a mistake. So this would be... Okay, yeah, I'm definitely misspelling it. It's template. directory and as you can see this is now working they i think that center lined it looks like it i don't know uh the shop name is small letter but we can go to customizer and i believe that we can change this site identity so we can do p house gag like so and save this and then if we close this and go back to the bottom we should get the name of the website, the year, which is now 
Creative Baradi, which is me. And we have some uh, payment methods, which is pretty cool. Now, the next section is pretty cool. We're going to have to create custom widgets. Um, and then that would make the template a lot more customizable. To do this, we're going to have to do some work in functions.php. So let's open functions.php. And maybe at the bottom, we can start from here. And to create the custom widgets, it's not so hard. Maybe we can do, let's copy some of this comment. And let's do, I don't know, the first one will be footer widget one. Uh, let's start. All right, to create a widget is actually fairly simple. We need to create a function and we need to give this function a name. So custom, uh, I don't know, for the widget one, make it as long as possible. No, don't do that. Make it as descriptive as possible, I guess. And then we can throw in some arguments and then this will be an array with the argument. So the arguments are going to be quite a few, but luckily once we do it, then we can uh, replicate it a few times. So we need to close this and we also need to register this sidebar. So, and then pass the argument like so. And then we need to trigger this function and add an action widget uh, widget in each is called the action. So add action widget underscore in it. And then this will be a, what was it? Custom for the widget one here. And we're good to go. Let's add the argument first of all. So the first argument will be an ID. This will be, by the way, this is all, you can find this on the WordPress documentation. Um, so this will be for the widget, maybe like call one, then we need to put a comma name of the widget and let's paste them out like that. So it looks a little bit more professional. Uh, this would be, what would this be? Uh, this would be underscore underscore. And then inside here, we need to put footer column one, and then uh, text domain. Then the next bit will be description. And the description will be again, let's go and score. And then this will be the first parameter will be uh, column one and then the second one will be text domain and then we have the before title this is actually fairly customizable and i'll show you what i'm doing now with the before title before the title we can technically create an h3 tag or whatever you wish that's why it's super customizable and then the title will appear here so we can give an h3 tag with a class of title. I always do this just in case I uh, need to target this title and style it. So I always give it a class name and then we're fine here, but also we need the after. So what we have to do is after title. And as you might have guessed it, the after title will be the closing of the H3, like so. And then the next one, don't forget the comma, uh, it's quite important. And the next one will be the before widget, underscore widget. That would be, I need to space them out a little bit more. Okay, what would that be? That would be a, Div with an ID um, and then S stands for string and the inside here we can do ID is equals percentage one dollar sign S um, S stands for S sorry S is for string and uh, that would be in double quotes sorry 
and then we need to do class and the class name will be widget and then percent sign and two dollar sign s like so we need to close it and go ahead and do the next line and by the way feel free to research this it's on the wordpress documentation and now we need the after widget which will be after underscore widget and then we need to do another diff and close this with single quotes like so and for the last one we don't actually need to do a comma so hopefully speaking if this worked if i didn't make any spelling mistakes like i usually do and if i go to the website refresh everything is looking good now what we have to do is go back to the dashboard go back to appearance widgets and then inside here you will see this footer column one and that's brilliant. That means that we can add anything in this uh, column. Uh, let's say, let's add a custom HTML. And let's say this was the about. So let's do that. About and we can add, we can add anything here, save this. All right, so let's have a look at how we can actually do this on the page. So to add this on the page, at the moment, if we go back to the actual website, you will see that nothing is happening. It's not appearing yet. This is just a text that we had from before. So if you go on the footer and inside here about, we can replace this. And in order to grab the sidebar, the widget, we can do PHP and then dynamic underscore sidebar. And then inside here, we need to point which widget that we want. So let me do a little bit of space and we can do footer widget uh, call one, if this is what I call it. Uh, I believe this is what I call it. Actually, this is going to be the ID. So let me double check. Uh, yeah, it's called footer underscore widget. Why is it underscore? It doesn't need to be in the score. Let's do it with dash. So for the dash widget call one, I uh, wonder whether this is gonna break now. And save it like this. And we're done. So if we go back to the page, refresh, we get in the narrow. And this is because we didn't close PHP. Let's close PHP and refresh again. And nothing is happening here. I think if we go back to widgets, we're going to have to recreate this. So if we want to put some custom HTML, we can do about custom HTML and save this. Now let's refresh. And as you can see, this is now appearing. We have our custom widget, which is pretty awesome. What I wanted to do here is actually create a menu. So this menu will have quite a few different links. We're probably not going to be able to create them because it's going to be too long, but I'm going to show you how to do it. If we go to widgets, we can drop a new one. We can get the menu, 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 navigation menu. Just drop in here. Let's remove this one and we can call this one about. Now here is where I would create a totally different menu. So at the moment we can use menu one. Let's save it and see what we get. So we get a few items. Obviously they need some styling, but I'll normally create a totally different menu by going to menus and then say we create a new menu and we call it about no let me call it footer footer widget about and then we just create it and we add a few items did i save it okay we need to add a few items so let me do a custom link for a sec so we have shipping and deliveries let's do that so I'm just going to fake it here. Let's add one and let's add one more. At least two. Uh, okay, that would do. Save this menu. Now, if you go back to widgets and we can select the new menu from here. So we can do a footer widget about. Save this. And if you go to the website, 
you'll see that we're getting shipping deliveries, returns and change. Obviously we need to start this, but let me finish the company one as well. So for the company one, we can literally copy this exact same code. And you probably guessed it, we're just gonna change everything from one to two. So one goes two, and let me copy this. I hope that I don't forget anything. Uh, one, one, that's two. That's all looking good. Okay. And I will show you the H3 in a second as well. So that's all looking good. Let's copy it one more time and do three. So three, we can do three here, small three. And then what else we can do? This one here. And that's fine. I think we're good. Obviously we need to go to the footer, copy this code and do the company one. So this would be uh, two and do the keep in touch. And this will be three. Save this. Let's go back to widgets, refresh, and we're getting an error. So we just do previously declared in, uh, okay. So, okay, so I've made a mistake in functions. Uh, yeah, we didn't change the name, so that needs to be changed uh, to free. Uh, that's looking good. Okay, so we have column one. Column two can be another drop down. Uh, sorry, not drop down, it can be another. Okay, uh, let's select the same one. But of course, we can create a another one for this one, column two menu. Uh, make sure you save it. And then column three can be a custom HTML. So let me say, this is, okay, this is company. So this one is company. And the other widget is, what was it? I'm losing it, I'm losing it. The other one is keep in touch. And here we can add some of the text like here, like we have in here. We can probably do a short code in here, or maybe we can do, uh, we can just copy and paste uh, the MailChimp like input. So I'm gonna leave this as it is for now. I would assume you know how to do that. If not, request it and I'll do it next time. And now refresh. Okay, we have everything working. This will need changing a little bit, but we can start this super quickly. I just wanted to show you the H3 that we've done earlier, so you see H3 class with title. So this is useful if you wanted to target it and change a little bit. Um, so that's why we've done in functions here. Right, this is all good. Let's remove this. So I'm gonna be super quick on this. Let's go to the main.scss and I'm just gonna do something super simple. Uh, categories, whatever, like, let's do for footer and footer footer. Did I give it a side footer class? Uh, side footer, yeah. Okay, that, that was already there, I think. So side footer, and then we can do menu. And then for the menu, we want to reset any margin, which is the UL. So margin zero. We want to do padding zero. We want to do list style type. And we want to do none. And then for the link, I'm going to reset this super quickly. Color, let's set it to white, which is a bootstrap variable. And then text decoration will be set to none. I don't want them to be underlined. We can definitely do a hover. So display uh, block. So the links are full width and they're easy to press. Maybe even like padding will be good. Padding 0 .0 0 0.3 RAM, like so. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something. Uh, yeah, we could do a hover. So if you wanted to do a hover, you copy the link, you do the uh, column, hover, and then we do text, decoration, maybe underline or whatever you wish. And that should work. Save this, refresh, and nothing is happening. Let's refresh again nothing is happening. So we need to make sure that this has the class of menu. 
Uh, yes, it does. So menu. Oh, yeah, menu. Uh, it's not picking up the class. Okay, we misspelled it, so it's menu. Save this and refresh. I'm starting to misspell stuff. And as you can see, this is a lot better now. Uh, obviously, it's looking a little bit odd having the same links on both. I would go to menus and add the rest just to give it a little bit more. realism and let's create a new menu where it's create a new menu oh no we need to save this and let's create a new menu and this will be footer widget company and then we can create menu and this is we might as well you know just add if you dummy links it doesn't really matter you get the point so if we go to widgets on the second one company we can just select company just so it's different and as you can see this is looking a little bit better um there seems to be is this padding uh yeah there seems to be a little bit of padding uh, oh yeah okay i've added the padding everywhere so i'm gonna do like zero three so top and bottom is zero left and right is three huh? yeah sorry that's wrong so we wanted to build it around top and bottom three and left and right zero excuse me uh yeah that definitely doesn't work zero type zero point three Okay, this looks a little bit better now. It's 0 0.3 rem and then z for top and bottom and then zero for left and right. Right, now that we got this out of the way, uh, let's have a look at what else we need to do. Um, for this, we can definitely copy a form from anywhere you can go. Uh, you can go here, generate the code and copy and paste it, maybe into your widgets and that would do, but there, there are also there are also other ways of uh, doing integrations, like I think you can do it with WooCommerce as well. Yeah, I think you can install a plugin for this and install it, but I'm sure that you can manage to do that. And just to show you, by the way, this is fully responsive now. So if we scale down, uh, it's, okay, if we scale down, this does not look good. So let me fix this super quickly. And what we could do is column small, 12 or maybe you know what maybe column small six and on this one column small six and then on this one we can do column small and then 12 oh uh, okay so we can't i don't think that we can do that we need to do small and then we can do medium of nd of two and then we can do the same for the other one otherwise it breaks i think if we do that uh, so let's add the class here and column four i think this will work okay uh that seems to work yeah i mean i'm pretty happy with this to be honest yeah okay that's okay -ish. Um, that could work. It's not so bad. Maybe the space in between them could be slightly less, but these are minor things that you can always fix. So let's have a look at what's next. Okay, one thing that uh, we didn't do in here is the menu drop down. Now that's already, I think that would already work. We just need to style it a little bit. So if we go to, uh, let's say appearance, themes, uh, actually, sorry, menu. And then let's go to the main menu, the primary menu. And then let's make sure that let's create a random link. I mean, it doesn't have to be real. I mean, all of this needs to be changed if you wanted to make it look like the design. Uh, but let's do, in fact, let's do a link for all products. I'm gonna create a new page. 
and then let's do all all products let's make uh, food accessories and toys so food accessories and we need one more how do we oh toys care special office toys okay Need special office. I could have had the short code in here for all of them, but uh, we'll do that in a second. Okay, now that we have the pages, let's go do menu. Uh, let's remove all of the ones that we definitely don't need, like all of them. Uh, do I need home? Mm, potentially but let's remove it. So I need all products, accessories, toys, uh, yep, that's it. As long as this one is at the bottom, this one is at the top, and then, and then we have food, accessories, then the rest will be fine. We have toys and care. Let's save this. Uh, this is looking a lot better and um, this needs to be, all this needs to be uppercase by the way. And let's just for example, let's do a drop down menu just so we have one. So for example, let's do, I don't know, drop down. Okay, let's add that. Uh, to drop, to add a drop down menu, you can just simply, did I save this? Okay, let's add a drop down menu here. So, drop down for example and then let's say we want accessories to have a drop down menu let's save this and let's see how it goes so technically speaking we could definitely add something to accessories like an icon but if you hover over you will see that we're getting this uh, drop down now we can quickly fix this with css i think it might be like a, yeah it's just a color issue i think and definitely need a little arrow here so bootstrap icons. Like a small chevron. I mean, I don't know if this will look good. Let's add this to accessories. Could be a little bit smaller, but we can make the text uh, bigger. And let me now show you how we can fix it. If we go back to the CSS, main CSS, uh, main navigation. Okay, we can, so this has a sub menu. So we could go under main navigation, I believe. And then we can use, uh, we can either make it super specific, but no, that's fine. I think we just do sub menu. And then inside here, we can just say for the list, we want the background color to be the primary color. Let's do that. And then we want to add maybe like, I don't know, the padding was all right, I think. Let's add a little bit of padding, like rem, one rem, and refresh. And okay, yeah, the padding was is, is okay. So let's remove this. But just like this, we have our job done working. Uh, needs to refresh again. Yep, and then I'll probably want to make these uppercase so what I can do is, uh, which one was it? The, I mean, we could do, we could do the link. So text, uh, what was it? Transform, uppercase and save. If we refresh, that looks a little bit better. I mean, the letters could be spaced out a little bit, but that's, that's uh, details. One thing that I've noticed here is that the dog isn't centered, which is a little bit annoying. And yeah, the logo is because of this. Okay, let's do for the header. If we go back, header, header, header. Uh, 
uh, logo, very important, we don't need that. Okay, yeah, that's much better now, much better center aligned and so on. But by the way, now if you were to add a item to the card, you can see that the item has been added here and we've got the payment and another one you can see here and so on. You can view the card and obviously this is broken and we need to fix it. Okay, the next thing that we might want to fix is the pages. If we go to the pages, uh, they're all kind of broken down as you can see and we need to fix this. And also if we put all products, we might as well get the product show code and paste it. So if you go to pages, first of all, and if you click on any of those pages that were generated automatically by WooCommerce, you can see this show code. So we kind of need to copy this. Let's go to all products, for example. And I believe that we can just do products. So products. And you can do so many things in here, but let's just quickly add a shortcut. So inside here, we can do shortcut. And then we just paste the shortcut of products and update. All right. Now, all about page, let's refresh. As you can see, all about page is now getting all the products. We scroll down and everything is kind of looking good, but it's also full screen, which is not what we want. So the pages is actually using the pages.php file. So what we can do is let's minimize everything, go to page.php and this is all good. But what we can do is inside main, we can just add a container. So dot container and then let's wrap everything in this container. So everything will be now center aligned and looking good. Um, container, oh, okay. I've made, I think that closed automatically. So I need to remove the div from here. So open here, close at the end, save. And if you go back, you will see that we're getting a nice layout here. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, one thing that I'll probably do is make a little bit of padding at the top. So what we can do on the container, we can do padding top, do five or actually three might be a good one. No, that looks good to me. I like this. This is pretty awesome. But when we scroll down, we get this sidebar and you could add the sidebar if you like. Uh, you could have two columns and just wrap this one in another. But for now, let's just remove it because I don't really want it. As you can see now, everything is looking better. Obviously, because we're an admin, we're getting this uh, edit button, but yeah, everything is looking pretty cool. Now, technically speaking, every single page that we have will follow exactly the same uh, style. So if we wanted to edit the food page, edit, and if we wanted to paste a show code, uh, let's see, show code of, I think it was just product. And then the category actually is a category like this category. And then let me double check. Yeah, category. And then we uh, get the category. So, so category equals, and we put the category at the moment. Obviously, we made categories. Let's have a look we go to products and categories, let's have a look at what we have. Uh, let's say, let's say clothing for now. Let's use the, that so we can do clothing update and let's go back to the website. And if we do food, you will see that uh, this is popping up now. Is this the only clothing one? Maybe it is, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's all looking, all of the pages are now looking good. Of course, we're going to have to do the categories manually, just the way I did that in this one, but you know how to do this now, so we can continue. Now, the next page that we could do is the actual product page. So if I click on this, uh, this isn't looking good to me. 
Now for this page, we might as well add the custom WooCommerce page that you can use. And let me show you how we can do that. So if we go to, if you go and create a new page, this page needs to be called WooCommerce.php. And inside this page, we need to do, we need to add the header. So PHP get underscore header and then close it. We also need to grab the footer. So let's do get footer. And in the middle of both is where we can add our main and then with the class of, I don't know, let's say container, just to make it simple. Uh, and then this would be main as well. And then inside here is where we can get the WooCommerce content. So we can do PHP WooCommerce content and close like so and save. Let me tidy this up. And this won't work just yet. We actually need to go to the functions.php page and add the WordPress theme support. So if you go to functions.php, where is it, where is it? Let's copy this and let's say WooCommerce. Uh, to add the team support, we can do add underscore team underscore support. And inside here, we just do WooCommerce. Let's save this and let's see what happens. So if I refresh this, you will see that this is now taking the new page that we just created. Everything is nicely aligned. Uh, we could put the padding at the top if you wish to keep it consistent, I guess, or just have a little bit of space. So we could go back to the WooCommerce page here and just do padding top three or five, whatever it makes sense. Uh, maybe even five would be better. I don't know. Let's leave it at this as you already know how to do that. Um, this is all looking good. Let's think of what's next. Okay, we pretty much have everything now. If I go to cart, you can see that this is actually looking really good. Uh, this button is actually somehow surprisingly taking the button from... Actually, this might be the WooCommerce uh, colors. I'm not too sure, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. Uh, you can, it's all working, of course. Uh, we haven't set up any payment methods and all that, but you can do all that. And now it's the customization of WooCommerce. Okay, so that's all looking good, but let's say that you wanted to make this specific page a little bit more custom without changing the original plugin, because if you change something on the original plugin and you update after, all the changes will be lost. So let me show you how we can actually do it. And what we have to do is let's go back to the shop. So I think it's here. So in your WP content uh, plugins, we have WooCommerce and then we have this folder called templates. So what I'm gonna actually do is copy this folder and let's go back to the public, WP content themes, and or team that we're working on now. And inside here is where I'm gonna paste that folder. Now, let me show you what's gonna happen. If we go back to the website, if we go to WooCommerce and then we go to status, somewhere around here, let's have a look. I'll tell you now. Um, Somewhere around here, here we go. At the bottom, we have templates. We have archive templates and we have overwrite. So now that we copy the templates folder from WooCommerce, what we want to do is actually paste it in our theme folder. So let's do Control C. And also I'm going to change this to WooCommerce so we know what it is. And save. So inside here, we have all those pages, all the card, checkout, emails, and so on. And let's have a look at what happens when I refresh this page now, the status page. As you can see, overwrite is showing all those pages that have been overwritten. 
Now, technically speaking, I could have just picked the pages that I wanted to edit, kind of like, let's say the card page, and just leave that page in there. I edit it and it's so good. For this example, I just wanted to show you all of them, just because when I upload the, the code to GitHub, you can choose a match. If you wish to do a specific page, you can just add the specific page and that should work as well. But I'm just adding everything for simplicity. Now, let me show you how we can actually edit the card. Now that we have this WooCommerce folder, I can go inside it and we can start looking. We can start digging. I mean, I'm not sure. Okay, here we go, card. So inside card, we have empty card, card item data, shipping total, card PHP. So it's one of these pages that will be, um, let's go back. So if we click on cards, maybe it's what it's going to be one of them pages. So if we click on card and you can see all of the data in here and you can start editing this if you wish to. So let's say, I don't know what to add, but let's say I'm going to add a heading of what H1. Custom card, uh, let's do H1. Save this. If I refresh, you will see that we get custom card. Maybe here we can have a banner, a nice banner that says, oh, we have something on offer, you know, uh, or whatever. But this is how you edit it. And of course, you can use your bootstrap classes to uh, move stuff around if you wish and so on. So this is how you do it. I, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do. But anyways, now that you know this, you can uh, modify anything that you wish and then close it and yep yeah, and go ahead let me refresh for the styles this is going to be very similar to bootstrap now it's a little bit annoying because the styles are going to be separate but let me show you so for example i can see that we're having problem with this here actually this might be a problem with my team let's have a look on sale woocommerce on sale okay so this is a little bit of a problem. Uh, it's not fully circular and it comes from a class on sale, but let's have a look at how we can modify the WooCommerce styles. So to modify the WooCommerce styles, we need to go back to the folder. And this would be, what would be public? Teams, no. Plugins, WooCommerce, and then assets, and then CSS. Uh, and then we can actually to make it easy, let's copy all of this. So I'm going to copy all of this and then let's go back to our shop. So public content themes, CSS, and then I'm going to paste this in here. And I'm going to change this to WooCommerce. Okay. Now that we have the CSS, we can actually start changing this as well as we wish. So for example, at the moment, we're actually using the styles of WooCommerce and we're not using the styles that we just added in here. So we need to add those styles. To do this, let's go to functions.php and let's copy a comment and let's just include styles in here. Actually, that's absolutely fine here. So if you wanted to remove some of the styles, so what we have to do is actually remove the WooCommerce styles and add all custom ones. To do this, first of all, let me show you how to remove them. And we can do add filter. And then inside here, with a little bit of space, we can do WooCommerce underscore and cube. styles and then we need to do then we need to do the function name so maybe like remove recommend styles and that needs to be in single quotes as well excuse me for this and then we need to create this function so we need to do function and then this will be the name here. Then we need to pass NQ styles. Uh, 
inside the function, let me just make a little bit of space. And inside this function, we can actually unset some of the rules. So this is actually, I'm going to copy and paste from the WooCommerce documentation. So you can unset them one by one if you wish. So this would remove general uh, styles, this remove the layout, and this remove uh, small screen optimization. So the reason we are doing this is because we can then add the, the styles from the ones that we just included in our CSS. So we're removing the main WooCommerce styles that come from the plugin, and we are adding them manually by including the ones that we just added here. And we can modify them. So let me show you how we can do that. So if we were to quickly, let's see if this works. First of all, let's unset all of them. Actually, yeah, let's unset all of them just to show you how bad things will get and refresh. And as you can see, there is no styles now. If you wish to do something so, super custom, you can do it right now, no problem. But if you wish to keep a few things such as the layout, you can definitely unset this, I mean, remove this. And then, yeah, and you would be absolutely fine. So maybe we can remove the general ones. We want the layout and we want the screen. Oh, and we need to, oh, sorry, we need to actually return this as well. So return, and then NQ styles, which is this. Okay, and if we go to the page now and refresh, you will see that we have some, we have a few styles. So the layout is still here, but the general WooCommerce styles are gone. And you can style this the way you want now. And what I'm gonna do is, let me show you if I was to remove the everything, what happens? So it's all gonna break now. So all of the styles are removed. And let me now add the back, the general styles in the small screen. And we're gonna be adding these ones manually. Let me show you how we can do that. So I'm actually going to copy this function because we've already done this uh, multiple times. We, to do this, I think I've copied this from, this is again from the document, from the official documentation, so I can copy and paste it here. But basically we're just enqueuing some more style sheets. So you can register my team, more commerce. Uh, we're getting the template directory again, as always. And then we go inside CSS, inside the WooCommerce folder that we just created and put our WooCommerce styles. And then we are loading the WooCommerce.css. And yeah, if the um, WooCommerce exists, we want to put the styles, add the styles, which is great. And we have the action just like above, but just separate in a separate section here, which is great. Okay, now that we've done this, hopefully if I refresh, everything should be back to normal. And it is, everything is back to normal. Even though that we've removed the, the general uh, CSS for Woo WooCommerce, we've added it here and everything is working back to normal, which is great. What that means now is that we can, we can go to WooCommerce, we can open the, what, which one would it be? Um, it would be this one, WooCommerce SCSS. We can technically open this and we can start modifying it. But obviously, we, as long as we are watching CSS and this is uh, compiling, we should be good to go. So let me fix this. The padding was wrong on this for some reason. I don't know why. It might be something to do with Bootstrap as well. Who knows? So on sale is the class. Let me copy it and search for it. So here it is on sale on 9522. And the problem was the padding. So if I remove this, save this, this will compile successfully. It will save and hopefully we have fixed this. Now we're having a little bit of an issue because most of our variables come from Bootstrap. Uh, they're already preset and it's just a little bit annoying that we have to go to WooCommerce and kind of like go to variables and set them. So if you go to WooCommerce, let's find variables. I don't know where it is. Um, where is it? Where is it? Variables. Here it is. Underscore variables.css. So technically speaking, we will have to go ahead and um, change some of these things, unfortunately. Now, I think luckily the this one is very similar color to the one I'm using. 
but to be to be exact we can go back to our main dot css file and copy the color from here then we can let me just remove some stuff because they're too many and then we can maybe change the variables from here so woocommerce let's change it to um, rgb and let's change this one to rgb as well and now this should be a darker purple color so let's save this make sure that everything is compiled and if i refresh and let's go to the cards you will see that this is darker purple and of course we can start modifying the rest so let me have a look at how i've done the images on the front page okay let's say for example we wanted to modify the buttons okay so if you wanted to change some of the button colors for example you could go to the variables uh, it's taking ages to compile but yeah you could go to the woocommerce variables.scss and change them from here uh we're getting an error for some reason hopefully that'll be okay uh but yeah you can uh, change them from here just the way i changed the main color i think they're using some sort of like uh light and filters so for the secondary i mean you could technically just uh, remove it uh, you could technically just copy a color that you want for the secondary and just paste it in here if you want and the secondary text you could just set it to white i guess so like so or you can set different variables and so i want to modify things and if you save this and refresh compiling this takes a little bit of while because there's so many files uh, but once you've done a refresh you will see that the buttons are now looking good and also you might want to change the price for example uh, let's say uh, what would it be okay we have price so you might want to change this so you you look for it and you go price okay highlights are just you uh, primary prices in stock labels flash and sale okay we can actually do this i guess um and let's change the price to the same color to the rgb one like so and of course you can uh, dig deeper and change whatever you like so technically speaking the price should change what was it on the design uh yeah on the design was fairly similar this one was lighter and crossed so yeah that's very similar to design if i wanted to make this button white like the design what i would do is on popular products maybe if we first of all see what the button is so it's button product type add to cart button so we could target this let's go to main.css let's say somewhere here we do we do add to cart button and then we could do uh, display as block save this and see what happens maybe it needs to be overwritten so we can do important and as you can see this has now worked i would wrap everything we might as well do this so i would go on the front page uh, i would go on the front page and i would find popular products maybe give this section a class of popular products So save this, go to the CSS and then inside popular products, I will wrap this just so we don't break anything else. Um, alternatively, you're going to have to search for it in the files and change it from there. So display block and maybe text align. Center, save this and see how this goes. And as you can see, this is looking nice just like the design again i can do the same thing for the images i could do so for the images they probably have a class name that you can use so woocommerce product link here it is this one i can use and maybe just do the attachment woocommerce thumbnail maybe we can do border radius of uh is it just radius that i can use 
I'm not so sure if we can do that. No. Okay, I can just put 20 pixels just for now and then overflow hidden and save. If this saves, you will see that all of the images are now similar to the design. Um, and I can do the I can do the same thing on this special office thing. I can just go, in fact, popular products and popular products and special office can share. So we can go to the front page and do container five special office. And if you refresh, you will see. Um, don't seem to be working. Oh, it's a class, so we need to put dot and save. Let's refresh. And as you can see, this is working now as well. Um, we can keep going like this forever and style more stuff and add more stuff. But one thing that I totally forgot to do is to change the font. We did include them in our project from Google, but we didn't actually change them. So let me show you how we can do that. If you go back to Visual Studio Code, and let's say underneath here, underneath the variables, we can create a few more. So, so in order to update the headings, which in my design was the Nunito font, we can do dollar sign headings dash font and then family. Then we can give the font family here. Usually you can copy this from Google. Mine is Nunito, like so, and that is sans serif. You can also set the font weight. At the moment, the headings will use the normal font weight, but if you want to set a custom one like I do, I want to set the font weight to be a little bit bolder. So what we can do is dollar sign headings, font dash weight, and I can set this one to 800. If we save this and go back to the browser, let's refresh. And as you can see, the headings are now all changed to this. And this is just the way I want it. And the next thing that we need to do is change the body text to pop-ins, just like we have it on the design. So let me show you how we can do that. Go back to Visual Studio Code and underneath here, we can add one more variable, which is font family dash base. The font family dash base will be exactly the same as this one here. We just need to change the font name to Poppins. So let's put Poppins. And also Poppins will be sans serif as well. Just like so. Close this. Save it. And if you go back to the browser, let's refresh. And I don't know if you're able to see, but this is now using poppins. The whole body is now using poppins. And if I was to inspect this, we'll probably find somewhere. Here we go. Font family is now set to poppins. And just like so, you can change the font size, the font weight, and so much more. Bootstrap is very customizable. And so WooCommerce. And now I can wrap up the tutorial. There is a lot more that I could have done. I wish I spent a little bit more time in the details, but as you can see, the video is already super long and that's why we're going to cut it short today. I'm always open to hear more suggestions. So if you have any, please comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell notification button and like the video. That would help me a lot. Thank you very much for watching. As always, my name is Raddy and you're watching my channel, Raddy the Brand, and I will see you in the next video.